the spider. Hidden behind a newspaper in a coffee shop is Dick Strong. In the booth behind him, Dr. Bob Bridget. Dick, listen. Don't turn around. There are two men watching us. My friend, Dr. Emeritus, called at my home last night. He telephoned from Polyvania? Said his daughter, Rini, was flying here overnight. But before I could ask what flight, someone cut us off. Hmm. I'm worried, Dick. You see, I'm afraid something's wrong. I'll look into it. What's the next plane out of here? One at two and one at four. Good. Catch the two o'clock. What about fare? Here. I want you to take this. Right. What about Dr. Emeritus? If he's all right, escort him back here. And his daughter? Jimmy Sparks and Inspector Blooper have gone to the airport to meet her. Good. See you, Bob. Good luck, Dick. Say, Jim, that plane's late. One thirty. Gee whiz, Inspector Blooper. Do you think that something happened? We'll check traffic control. Good. Control. Calling. 105. Control. Calling. 105. Something's wrong with flight 105. I'm getting no answer. <clears throat> the Inspector Blooper. Anything wrong up there, huh? Yes, sir. There is. Three unidentified craft tailing flight 105. Okay up there, 105? 
Thanks, son. The passengers are safe and so are the pilots. Yeah, thanks. We owe our lives to you and the robot Gigantor. Inspector, what happened to the plane you were supposed to meet? Doctor, that plane was nearly hijacked, but thanks to Gigantor and Jimmy, that plane will be landing here shortly. Good. Then the girl Rini is safe. Yep. Here they come now. Tootsie, hijacking the plane must have failed. All right, Monty, let's move on to plan B. Right. Starting right now. Yeah. yeah. Hey, watch where you're going, will you? <laughs> So you see, Rini, you're a very lucky girl. I know I am, Inspector. I just wish Daddy were here with me, too. We're already taking care of that. Your dad will be here with you soon. Gee, he's playful. His name, Rini? Well, I call him Coco. He's rather mischievous, but quite clever. Mm -hmm. oh. no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he's a cute little devil, but you can't trust a monkey behind your back. You guys, get out and reach for the sky. You know who I am, Inspector Blooper. Don't argue with them. They're carrying machine guns. Let's all step out. You don't understand who I am, Inspector Blooper. Uh -huh. Quiet, Big Mouth. You're giving me a headache. First come, Bugsy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Step outside. Oh, no, I won't. Quick, Coco, help me. Coco? Uh, oh, 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 Inspector. Oh, oh that's hard. Slam out of here, boys. Rini, are you all right? Yes. Good. Let's hurry. You're right. Thank goodness I did turn my back on that monkey. If I hadn't, he couldn't have taken my gun and saved us all. <laughs> Attaboy, Coco. Say now, what's that you got there? Oh. Hey! That's my wallet. <laughs> Look here. Now he's trying to take my nose. Oh, yes, Doctor. I carry something in my purse. It's from my father. For you. Oh? My instincts tell me that once we open this purse, we'll have the key to the mystery of what happened to our Dr. Emeritus. Exactly what you'd expect to find in a lady's purse. The purse is completely empty, and yet it's still heavy. Maybe Dr. Emeritus rigged up a false bottom. Maybe. Oh, you've ruined my nicest purse. It's all right. Mama will get you another one tomorrow. You would sad. So that's it. Now I see. Now I understand why those rascals are after little Rini. They're really after this invention. What is that, Doctor? A lead box? A lead shield of some kind? No, Jimmy. Nice try, but let me demonstrate. Notice my fingers never leave my hand. <laughs> okay, everybody ready? Uh-huh. Okay. That's right, Inspector Blooper. That tiny leaden box powered all that heavy machinery. It generates 100,000 volts of electricity. It's called Super Elex. Dr. Emeritus has worked on it for years. You can imagine what would happen if it fell into the wrong hands. That's why he sent it to me through the person he trusted most, his daughter. What do you mean, wrong hands? Jim, Dr. Emeritus has been experimenting with a powerful new ray. Ray? You mean a ray that paralyzes men? No, nope. worse than that. The ray can wipe out an entire army. Used properly for science, the ray can almost perform miracles, but... Yes, used improperly. 
Super LX can be one of the greatest forces of destruction the world has ever known. That's why they were after Reedy. Look, she's tired. She's asleep. I'll call Mom. Bob, I'm convinced Dr. Emeritus is in big trouble. You, what do you think? I'm afraid you're right, Inspector. This morning, I put Dick on a plane to Polyvania. You what? Dick Strong? Wow! farther to Dr. Emeritus' house? Not far. Oh, what's that? Soldiers! They guard Doctor's house. Not good. Captain Spider, please let the doctor go. I am his housekeeper. I know he is good. Quiet! Dr. Emeritus is a traitor to the people of Polyvania. He sent his new invention abroad for committing this terrible crime. He should be exiled. And I am warning you, Doctor, that you will be exiled if you do not make me the machine to produce that ray. Captain, I will never allow my ray to be used as a weapon of mass destruction. What? Who wants to use the ray as a weapon of mass destruction? All I want to do is to wipe out an army here and there so I can take over the world. That is a goal I can never allow, Captain Spider. Take him away. Take him away! won't you? The master is a good man and Captain Spider is wicked. Now, how can I get the doctor away from the spider and his army of traitors? Spider needs soldiers. That's an idea. Just hope they don't discover me. Captain Spider? You have bungled the job with the plane and let the doctor's daughter escape. Yeah, I'm very sorry, Captain. He ruins my career and he's sorry. So what now? I don't know, sir. To conquer the world, I must have the super elects of Dr. Emeritus. I know, Captain. You must get the unit away from the doctor's daughter, Rini. I will try again, Captain. This time, I do not fail. Good. In the meantime, I will work on Dr. Emeritus and make him redraw the design. Ah, one thing more. As long as the Super Elex is out of the country, it can be used against us. This must be prevented at any cost. You understand? Yes, Captain. To recover the Super Elex will require nothing short of a real all-out attack. I take full command. We launch Operation Helmet from Snake Island. It is done, Captain Spider. I will be sure to tell... Soon the entire world will belong to me. Everyone hail the spider. <laughs> Hilda. Oh, is that you, Hilda? Shh. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Oh, Hilda. Oh, you're smearing my badge. Inspector Blooper, you will do as we say. Your wish is my command. You will apprehend at once the girl, Rini Emeritus. Oh, and the boy, Jimmy Sparks. I will apprehend Rini Emeritus and young Jimmy Sparks. Later that night, at the home of Dr. Bob Brilliant, Oh, yes, sir. This is Officer O'Monahan. Yeah, this is Inspector Blooper. Get Jimmy Sparks and Reedy and bring them down to headquarters right away. Jimmy Sparks and Reedy? I'll do that, sir. 
What was that all about? Well, that was Inspector Blooper, sir. He wants me to take Jimmy Sparks and Rini down to headquarters right away. At this hour? I guess he must have a pretty good reason. Well, then, you'll just have to wake them up, put them in a squad car, and rush them down to headquarters right away. Yes, sir. Well, it may be safer here, but this is taking too long. Where's Mr. Blooper? I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't know we were here yet. Did you tell him, guard? Wait, you're not the guard. Right. I happen to be a secret agent of the Captain Spider of Polyvania. Aren't you surprised? Inspector! Inspector! <laughs> Take it easy, kid. In a few hours, you'll be on your way to Polyvania. Inspector, don't you recognize me? Jimmy Sparks. Quiet! Yeah. Hey, one more word out of you and I'll take away your tin soldier. Yeah. And that goes for your monkey too, young lady. Yeah. By order of the spider. Da, 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 da. Don't be scared, Reenie. Gosh, I can't understand what's happened to Inspector Blooper, but we'll get out of this somehow. If only I had the control box for Gigantor. Wait, I have an idea. <laughs> Attention, this is Inspector Ignaz Blooper. I order all patrolmen to leave Dr. Brilliant's home at once. In addition, all members of the force may take a two weeks vacation starting now, that is all. <laughs> What? Dr. Brilliant to see you. Dr. Brilliant? I don't know any Dr. Brilliant. Tell him I said to go away. You're far away. Uh. Ah. Mm, Coco, you brought the unit. You're so clever. This does not control Gigantor, but it's a control box, all right. Wonder what it does. Coming, Master. Your wish is my command. All right. Release us from the cell at once. Very well, sir. Your wish is my... Oh, I said that, didn't I? Uh-oh. Hey, you dropped that. Not like that. Give me that control, you... <laughs> Look, Bugsy, we have better cut out with the remote control unit for Giganter. Now. Stop, you two, Stop. <laughs> No! Uh-oh. Ah, brilliant. Boy, oh boy. I suspected there was something funny going on around here. Where's Inspector Blooper, Jim? Behaving very strangely. Right over here, Doctor. <laughs> that control unit and the helmet worn by the Inspector must have something to do with each other. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Bob Brilliant, Jimmy Sparks, Rini Emeritus. Now what are all you people doing here? In the middle of the night. How about that? The moment he took off the helmet, he became himself. <laughs> of course. Here, Coco. Sure, I'll tell you everything about the spider. Good. To start, where's your base of chief operation? Dr. Brilliant, Dr. Brilliant. Doctor. We've located Captain Spider's base camp from the air, sir. Attention all units! Attention all units! Proceed full speed to Snake Island! All units stand by to counterattack. Yes, sir. Dr. Brilliant is a target. Copy is airborne, sir. We have an affirmative on that. Gigantor, watch for Snake Island. They say that from the air, it looks like a giant snake coiling around. Roger. Keep us informed if you see anything. Over and out. Operation Hurricane. 
it's a hurricane. Ha! Now you fools will reveal the sting of Captain Spider. All right, Jack Andrew, go. Gantry's done it, Inspector Blooper. He stopped the hurricane. Yay! All units, forward! So they think spiders trapped in his own web, do they? We'll see about that. So, uh, protecting Asgard takes a lot out of you. So, uh, that's right. Going out here swinging Stormbringer. Jeez. A lot going on. So, good morning. It's 8 a.m. now. Eastern Standard Time. It's time for, sci for Saturday morning series. I want to say Friday, sci Fridays. Uh, as always, I'm your host, Captain Cartoon, bringing you the platoon, the best in cartoons from years gone. Bye. So, I'm mixing it up again. Bringing you some stuff that I, 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 I'm trying to get back and getting this flow going again. Mixing stuff in that I, I forgot about or just didn't get back to, but we're, we're going to keep it mixing it up. Hope you guys like Gigantor. Hope you like that pre-cartoon. The little black and white, sometimes colored, always old. Because uh, that reminds me of what Saturday mornings were about. Um, still thinking about this, tacking a little bit of the farm report on at the beginning of that, just to mess with you guys. But I'd have to put that at like 5 o'clock in the morning, because, uh, man, I, I hated getting up early in the morning. Still do. Still not a good morning person. Um... But I had it down pat, man. Saturday morning, I get up 
bright and early. Sometimes I would go to bed at like 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning and get up like 2 hours, 3 hours later and, and start Saturday mornings all over. Because I'd stay up and watch uh, uh, old sci-fi shows and Godzilla movies and stuff like that. So, But, enough of that. As always, Saturday Morning Serials is brought to you by Are You Game the Best Combo Collectible? Video game, magic, role-playing, toy, collectible, and more store located at 124 North Sunset Drive, Pickle, Ohio, 45356. You can find Are You Game on Facebook, and you can find The Captain on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and you can find me with my other show, Talk and Roll, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, I don't know about Instagram. Uh, and uh, tw TikTok, so you can see little clips and videos from my show. Uh, we got a lot of really cool interviews coming up from people from all over the world. So, all right, so we're going to start off this morning with a cartoon that I love and I know you guys love too The Tick. Um, man, just something about this cartoon. It was great, it was fun, yeah, it was. Almost the perfect time for this, the early 90s. Uh, I know this isn't a 80s Saturday morning cartoon, but it is a 90s cartoon, and I still like it. Uh, but this is The Tick, and this is episode 3, and this is The Tick versus Dinosaur Neil. In <laughs> sun rises to greet him, and in its low, warm light he stands like some sort of, of pagan god or deposed tyrant. Staring out over the city, he's sworn to, to stare out over. And it's evident just by looking at him that he's got some pretty heavy things on his mind. morning it is. I'm up. I'm up. Morning patrol. I, I got it. No. No patrols today, small friend. Today is our day off. We're going to spend quality time together. We're going to Dinosaur Grotto. Look, guided tours daily of a working dinosaur dig. Come watch our team of expert scientists dig up real dinosaur bones. Dinosaur bones, sleepy sidekick. Fun and educational. Whatever. Uh, as long as we're back by six and Dot isn't kept waiting. Ah, yes. The sister. That's right. And she still doesn't approve of my superhero lifestyle. I only asked her to dinner to show her that I'm still a sane and loving person. Family values! You're crazy for that sibling! <laughs> uh, yeah, so tonight, can you just tone it uh, down? Not a problem, gentle Avenger. I will suppress my every urge. <laughs> hey, cool! As 
you can plainly see, these giant reptiles ruled the prehistoric Earth for eons. They weren't very bright, <laughs> but they were very, very big. And that concludes this afternoon's tour. Once again, I'm Dinosaur Neil, and as chief paleontologist here at the Grotto, I'd like to thank you all for coming. And remind you that we have T-shirts and other souvenirs right here in the gift shop. Consume! <laughs> Eager, Imp. I must say it's a pleasure to see superheroes taking such an interest in science. Wonderful tour, Dinosaur Neil. I never knew I could learn so much. <laughs> yeah. Now, just to retain it. Dinosaur Neil, look, we found a femur. Hmm, a potosaurus, beautifully preserved. Just what I need. You boys like science. Why not come back to my tent? I'll show you the kind of science you can't find in a textbook. I believe I can grow a dinosaur with the help of these fossils. Well, I don't know. Uh, that doesn't sound possible. Mm, it is. I saw it in a movie once. My machine synthesizes living tissues from fossilized DNA patterns. Hey, smooth. Look here. I've already grown some dinosaur tissue. I have to keep it in a solution of acetosalicylic acid. Otherwise, I'm afraid it would just keep on growing indefinitely. I figure I'll have a fully functional organism by the middle of next month. Bad move, Neil. No harm done. <laughs> Too bad you boys have to leave so soon. If you could stick around, you could catch the fireworks on the parade of extinction. Fireworks? Extinction? Keen. We'd like to, Dinosaur Neil, but we have to... <gasps> uh, Tick, uh, we have to make dinner for Dot. We're late. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bye, boys. <laughs> Lovely tonight. Your hair is like a halo of mouse brown fire. Whatever did you do with it? I washed it. Are you okay? You look a little big. Mm. Well, Arthur, this is delicious. I'm glad to see you still have time to cook. <laughs> uh, thanks. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, oh, the tick tossed the salad. Yes, quite a challenge. Dad really messed you up, didn't he? Hey, God, man, that thing is speaking a language that hasn't been heard on Earth in 4,000 years. Nub! We interrupt tonight's episode of The Mummy Speaks to bring you this special report. Good evening. I'm Sally Vacuum. The authorities have issued a citywide alert. Dinosaur Neil, head paleontologist and tour guide in Dinosaur Grotto, is now 70 feet tall and walking down Main Street. <laughs> Sally. Deflator Mouse, can you tell us what the superhero community plans to do about this menace? 
Good question, Sally. I think we'll just, um... Sit this one out and wait for the National Guard. So, uh... When's this gonna be on? <laughs> Must... Save... City! Heck! Tone it down! <laughs> this cake is delicious, Dot. What is it? Chocolate. <laughs> Scientists ready to give you assistance and a big pair of pants. Man, those are big pants. Sauce, sauce, and just toss us in the world. Well, I wouldn't say he's rampaging per se. The National Guard says it won't come unless the dinosaur is officially rampaging. didn't work. What's yours? Well, this morning, a dinosaur Neil said that he had to keep his dinosaur tissue in a solution of acetosalicylic acid to keep it from growing. Uh, yeah. Tick! Acetosalicylic acid is aspirin. If we can give Neil a dinosaur-sized dose of aspirin, he might shrink back to normal. Well, I'll try anything once. Let's see now. We usually recommend two aspirins for an average-sized adult. Now, how much did you say your friend weighs? Hmm, uh, about 180 tons. And still growing. Oh, okay, give us a minute. So, do you think Dot's mad at you? Maybe, but she has to understand that this is what I want to do with my life. Guard. Mm -hmm. This could mean the city needs the human bullet. Fire me, boy! Mm. 
Here you go, boys. That's how they cure what ails them. Wait! We can save him. All we need is five minutes. What can you do in five minutes, civilians? Superheroes, sir. <laughs> We're going to give him an aspirin. Hey! Get back here! You may not know this, sir, but nearly 2,000 years ago, a brew made from white willow leaves was recommended for gout. Today, a remedy based on that same chemical, aspirin, is the most widely used medicine in the world. But aspirin is strong medicine and should be taken only as directed. And children should never, ever take aspirin except under the supervision of their parents or a licensed physician. That's good advice. Hey, Arthur! How are we going to get Neil to take this pill? I mean, do we have a plan for that? Look out! What? Kick! <laughs> Looks like your friend's being devoured. Okay, everybody! Ready! Aim! No! Give the tick a chance. He's nigh invulnerable. He'll be okay. He's got to be. You can't shoot me away. Superheroes, the Tick, has fed himself to Dinosaur Neil along with an enormous aspirin in a desperate attempt to bring the rampaging reptile under control. The Tick appears to have been devoured in one of the most selfless and heroic acts this reporter has ever witnessed. This, after a spokesman for the superhero community said that they would, quote unquote, sit it out and wait for the National Guard. This looks kind of bad, doesn't it? Minutes ago, I recorded an exclusive interview with the pharmacist who provided the giant aspirin that may be the key to the dinosaur's downfall. That was quite an aspirin. Oh, I suppose so. Was that the largest prescription you've ever filled? Oh, yes. Uh, but I made a huge cough drop once. And how big was that? Oh, I see. Uh, size of a quarter. Thank you, Sid the pharmacist. To the pants. Bring him to the pants. There is a solemn silence at the must go shopping plaza as we all wait to see what fate has befallen the tick. <laughs> Aspirin! 
thoughts about it for the blue guy, but he went down fighting. It can't be. Okay, everybody, let's try this again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> to the showers with us! So, tell me, Tick, when you were, uh, you know, in my mouth, um, fighting my tongue, was that uh, weird for you or anything? Uh, unique, Neil. Unique. But all in a day's work for a superhero. Well, you saved my life. Oh, don't thank me. Thank Arthur. The aspirin was his idea. Well, Arthur, I have to admit it. You guys saved Dinosaur Neil and the whole city. But I'm still not going to do the dishes. It is really good to be human again. Well, once again, my friend, we find that science is a two-headed beast. One head is nice. It gives us aspirin and other modern conveniences. But the other head of science is bad. Oh, beware the other head of science, Arthur! It bites! And it can really ruin a good day off. Powerful Magmar will stop at nothing to possess them. <laughs> and so the nastiest new rock lords, Spearhead and Saberstone, are sent to capture them. Time to polish off the Jewel Lord. Polish this, Saberstone. Hold it! So separately new from Tonka. Yes, we are So I hope you guys are still digging the tick, because what is not to dig about the tick, man? Um great show funny um i love the uh early 2000s live actual patrick warburton and uh bat manuel instead of deflator mouse and uh um uh, instead of american made you, you'll have uh oh man it, it's it's even a parody of a parody which is great so but we're gonna keep it going and we're gonna keep we're gonna scoot over to the anime aspect of this world and we're going to do some uh, Thunderbirds 2086. Um, a lot of people remind me. It does remind me a bit of Star Blazers. It does remind me a little bit of, you know, um, some, some uh, uh, Captain Harlock in there and stuff like that. But uh, it's definitely an entity onto its own. I enjoy it. enjoy the vehicles. I think some of the stuff is pretty cool that they come up with. Uh, but this is episode 14, The Big Deal. Never expanding the frontiers of technical superiority into areas unknown and uncharted. Each quest promises marvelous discoveries, but each also brings potential danger. In direct response to the dangers of our advanced technology, we need an organization that is ready to mobilize dramatic survival resources at a moment's notice. 
Conceptions and rescue that can challenge the impossible. <laughs> Thunderbirds 2086. The Thunderbirds, five of the finest cadets in the world, dedicated to the service of mankind wherever he may be in distress. Combined with a dazzling array of vehicles and equipment designed to specifications in the space age technology of the 21st century. A special rescue squad ready to answer a last chance distress call. A call that could arrive at any time from any disaster scene on or off this planet. These are the Thunderbirds 2086. This is the International Rescue Command Center. Stand by for transmission from the IRO data queue. Cryolite is a rare and valuable rocket fuel element. Several freighters carrying cryolite have been attacked. Federation suspects that the Shadow Axis may be involved. That means General Star Crusher, and that means intergalactic trouble. All Thunderbirds stand by for action stations. for computer link and transmission of security code. Let me make things perfectly clear. The Federation vessels are disguised as freighter ships and they're fully loaded with crates of cryolite. Just have the men ready to retrieve the crates as we discussed. They're to be transported from Space Dock 12. I'm pleased. Once the cryolite is delivered to the Corellium mining port on the deltoid asteroid, I can process it into rocket fuel. Making you president of Corellium Mining's Earth-based headquarters was a very good idea, Earthman Herman Grody, for you and the Shadow Axis. Weather is clear and cool on the Mariner's Sea Station. With the barometer rising, the morning promises to bring many great things. Like, for instance, Moon Moose cereal. That's right, for a hearty way to start your day. Captain, unidentified undersea vessel. Approaching fast. It's probably a Federation support craft checking our status. Hmm. I'm getting something on the sonar now. Look at that! It just fired torpedoes! Full speed ahead! They're coming too fast! Listing 45 degrees. Good thing the cryolite isn't volatile in its raw state. Phase one complete, moving to next target. This is Federation Freighter One. We have a Mayday condition red. 
We've been ambushed by an unidentified submarine. We have additional radar contact with unknown vehicles. Presume that they will attempt to pick up the cryolite. Request backup support immediately. Thunderbirds 1 and 4, get the cryolite before it goes under. This is Thunderbird 1. I'm going in. This is Thunderbird 4. Hold tight, Freighter 1. I'm coming up right below you. Freighter 1, support vessels are due in 15 minutes. They will airlift you off. Do you require medical attention? No, thanks, Captain. Commander Simpson was right to have you trailed behind us. Sonar is clear now. Whoever they are, they didn't want to tangle you with the Thunderbirds. Hurry, save the cryolite. Roger. Callan, I'm going in to launch missile buoys. Submarine. It's heading for Federation Freighter 2. Sending computer coordinates now. Roger, Captain. We'll pursue enemy ship. Callan, did you receive the coordinates? Roger, Captain. Loading data now. Navigation computer online. Come in. Unidentified submarine. No radio contact. I'm initiating high-speed pursuit. Firing turbos. track you from above. Our unidentified friend will get more than he bargained for. The commander figured this one right. Sting 2 on target. Firing. Torpedo launch. Firing homing torpedoes. Trouble, boss. The Thunderbirds are here. How much cryolite have you boys picked up? Uh, none. You fool! The Federation probably has an entire division crawling all over that area. They could be monitoring your conversation right now, you big idiot! Uh, no way, Mr. Grody. I'm scrambling the signal. But there is one more thing, sir. And what is that? I'm caught red-handed by the Thunderbirds. They're closing in. You've got to do something, and fast. You're right, I will do something. The financial affairs of Corellium are sound. All rumors that Corellium headquarters on the deltoid asteroid is supporting a rebellion of miners are completely false. Hold on. This is Grody. Make it quick. No, I don't want to talk to the New World Times, you dolt. As a matter of fact, I don't want to talk to you either, so don't ever call me again. You rang? What happened? International Rescue had them covered. They suspected disguising the ships wouldn't work. The Thunderbirds were waiting for the freighters to be attacked. Ah, uh, what about that cryolite? You know that cryolite is Federation regulated, and we have no contract to mine it. There's no way we can get that stuff now. Don't tell me that. We've got the best geo survey computers. I don't want any more excuses. Get out there and find me some cryolite! But why? 
Even if we had facilities to refine rocket fuel from cryolite, we couldn't sell it legally anywhere in the system. Unless you plan to sell it out of the... There have been some changes, Florian. Now I'm in charge of Corellium. Get going. Good work. I knew disguising those transport ships wouldn't be enough protection. Commander! Captain Beta? The Shadow Axis had to be involved. I want to continue the investigation. Criminal investigation is not a job for the Thunderbirds. Whoever attacked us had intimate knowledge of all mining and shipping lanes, sir. Obviously, it's Corellium mining. Corellium. They control mining and research labs on Earth and on the asteroids. They could easily move the cryolite out into space. Captain? We are not the Federation Major Crimes Division, the Space Patrol, or even the Galactic Relations Commission. I get the message, sir. Dylan, wait up! All Thunderbirds primed and ready for action stations. Are you expecting more trouble, sir? If Corellium is dealing with the Shadow Axis, then they're dealing with General Starcrusher, and that means trouble. This deal is getting worse by the minute. Cryolite is the hottest stuff around. What kind of name is Star Crusher, anyway? I've got good news for you, Mr. Grody. I found a shipment of cryolite. Well, Florian, it's about time. It's being picked up from Squeeze Me Mining off the coast of Norway. Well, that's very good news for you. It is? Yes, because you'll be aboard that ship to carry out the plan. I'll be seasick, Mr. Grody. You know everyone at Squeeze Me. Talk yourself on board. Change the navigation computer and send the ship to an isolated spot where you can blow it up. I must say that the methods of this company have changed since you became president. <laughs> the competition has killed us. Our only strength is our sister company in the belt. And you have the honor of helping the company. But it's just one shipload of cryolite. A new client will pay a very high sum for even one shipload of cryolite. I suppose he's also had experience with anti-federation activities. This is a great opportunity. So what if a few miners want to break away and control their own world? It's only more business for us. You know I'm right. So why not deal with a new emerging market? The client wants cryolite. We'll sell him cryolite. Now get out of here. It's a pleasure dealing with you, Earthman Brody. I can turn that cryolite into enough fuel for a full-scale invasion. We will run the new Earth together. This is Federation Cruiser Drummond. Come in. Can you confirm navigational coordinates? The computers are mucked up. This course change is highly irregular. What's happening? Well, they've got us heading right into a narrow inlet. Computer says it will lead to a shortcut, but all I can see are icebergs. Lots of them. The engine room is clear. Hmm. The blast shouldn't damage the reactor. Second charge in place. Here goes. Yeah. Explosion in drive shaft one. It's got to be sabotage. Damage report. How bad is it down there? What do you mean we're sinking? Hurry, sir! Come back, you fuel! Ouch! Are you all right? Of course not. I just walked into an explosion. Oh. Any luck? I'm transmitting distress signals now. Just one more little one. Wow! Oh! Power surge from vicinity of Federation cruiser Drummond. Stand by, everyone. This is not a drill. Go to condition yellow. The Drummond just made a pickup, and I'll bet you five plump turkeys she's carrying cryolite. Condition red. Drummond has been hit. Commander's theory is right. Somebody sure wants to get their hands on some rocket fuel. Right now, I'm worried about the drumming.
ETA 10 minutes to Danger Zone. Don't worry, I'm gonna get you out of here. Come in, Grody! Where's my pickup? Where's the cryolite? There's been a mistake. The Drummond is not carrying cryolite. Get me off, I'm sinking! No cryolite? Now, isn't that a shame? Yes, it is, sir. Hurry! Oh, oh no! Florian, do you know why there's no cryolite? Because you walked right into a Federation setup. They weren't expecting sabotage, but they were expecting an attack. And I can't have them trace it back to me now, can I? Are you listening to your communicator? Uh, uh. This is Thunderbird 1. And Thunderbird 4. Stand by, Droman. We're coming aboard. Help! Help, help us, Thunderbirds! Help! help! Going into auto hover. I'm taking in Thunderbird 7. Evacuate the crew while I check on the reactor. Roger. Stand by, Drummond. Turbo's firing. Thunderbird 7 away. I'm down on the chopper pad. I'm going in. Moving to the reactor. Luckily, no bad injuries. Captain Vader, give me a damage report. I'd say small explosive devices were used. There's some structural damage to the reactor housing. Monitors give me a systems clean code, but the water level is rising fast. I wasn't expecting sabotage. Whoever planted the bombs is still aboard. We've got them. How much water has been shipped so far? About four feet. Still rising. Run the data file on the Drummond's reactor systems. Yes, sir. If that reactor goes down, superheated water could explode into a radioactive cloud that would cover half of Europe. The Drummond displaces 90,000 tons. We might be able to bring in an iceberg to keep her afloat. A very interesting concept, Captain Hansen. I'm off. Captain James, try to choose the smallest one possible for flotation. The Thunderbirds, I should have known better. Leave me alone. Come on, we're in danger here. Let me help you up. It's my fault I'm such a hosehead. Here we go. Towing cables away. Turbo's on full. safe now. Stabbed in the back by Herman Grody, and he's dealing with someone, something else. It controls Grody, a dark and evil force. It was going to use the cryolite for an invasion. I knew it. <sighs> Take it easy. Try to rest. Dylan, stand by. Surfacing fast. Roger, Callan. Impact confirmed, sir. Iceberg is stabilizing the Drummond. Uh, hold it. Hold it. She's breaking up. Too much stress. Dylan, freeze the ice mass with super cold helium.
opening gas vents. Commander, the Drummond is frozen solid, the reactor is stable, sending out salvage vessels. <sighs> All this red tape is ridiculous, Commander. We're wasting time. Captain, we do this my way. We do it by the book. Sir, receiving priority message from the World Council. They want us to arrest Herman Grody of Carillium. Yes, sir. All right, Captain Beta. Uh... Armor's on. Stop, Brody! When we rule this planet together, you won't have Herman Grody to kick around anymore. It's over, Grody. This is Thunderbird 2. Lower the chopper to the ground. You uh, can't make me. Going somewhere, Mr. Grody? I blew up a few ships. Big deal. Nobody's perfect, okay? Look, I'm setting down nice and easy. You won't get away with this. I have friends in high places. Oh, Mr. Grody, how you disappoint me. But then, you are an Earthman. I can't help you now. I'm all right. Thanks, Gran. You too, Callan. Catch you later, Dylan. Cycle. Your parents put it together, and Sidewinder's got the Stunt Shifter. Sidewinder. With sure grip steering, super sleek styling, and a Stunt Shifter that can spin you into excitement. Sidewinder. Sidewinder Cycle with Stunt Shifter. New from Tonka. Silverhawks, partly metal, partly real, mighty warriors with the powers to protect space from all evil. It's me, Evil Monstar. Figures and attack birds sold separately. Monstar and Sky Shadow attack the Silverhawks. Flashback, prepare for battle. Sky Shadow grabs him and sucks him in, but then Stronghold oh, flies oh. to the rescue. Activate Saber Jaws. Flashback escapes and the fight rages on. Bombs away. Where'd he go? Ha, gotcha. Not yet. 
stronghold and steel will. Sky Shadow and I will not be beaten. You wanna bet? Silverhawks. You know, it's so funny going through some of these older books and stuff like that when they change format, went direct market. There's no ads in this. There's not even an ad on the back. Man, it's just weird to look at. Because you go through, you expect to see a comic book ads in here, but it's still Moon Knight, and there's nothing wrong with that. So I hope you guys still dig Thunderbirds. Um, I know I do. Um, but we're going to keep it going. And we're going over here because you've all asked for it. You all keep telling me you want it. And when I don't air it a week, you guys get mad. And that is Terra Hawks. Yes, the TV show that is pure nightmare fuel. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Uh, man, little kid Paul would be. The puppets are creepy. I, I can't put it any better way. They are creepy and weird looking. Uh, not that it's a bad show. It's actually a pretty good show. But the puppets are creepy looking. So, this is Terra Hawks. Episode 10 is from here to infinity. Enjoy. Terra Hawks, stay on this channel. This is an emergency. Flaming thunderbolts. Zero? What are you playing at? Hmm? <laughs> Sorry, sir. I must have been snoring. <laughs> For space sake, Zero, how can you be snoring? You must have a faulty circuit. Get it fixed before I pull your plug. NASA confirmed they have nothing in the area. Dr. Einstein, we have a sighting. Do you have a preliminary scan? Sensors indicate a metallic body. No life sign. No energy sources. Alien? 10-0. Full magnification. Full magnification. Looks like one of those early probes. It can't be. I don't like it. Zero? Check the missing craft log. Fast data search. I want to know what that is. Saw. 1988. Venus probe delta. Malfunction during second orbital phase. 10-0. Incompatible design characteristics. 1997. Russian space liner. Moskva 111. Far too small. It could be a Moskva 426. No way, lad. You better get your circuits tested. Will you two get your act together? What do we have here? Space Probe Alpha. Launched 1999. Well? <clears throat> he's... he's right, sir. Are you sure? Certain, sir. Positive identification. And we've got big trouble. That probe was never designed to return. Thanks for agreeing to meet, Doctor. You made it sound important. It is. We must salvage that Alpha probe. I'll need to be convinced it's a job for Terrahawks. After hearing what I've got to tell you, I guarantee you'll be convinced. Where are you now? Fifteen minutes from rendezvous. There'll be someone there to meet you.
This is where we part company, Commander. You're quite sure this is the place? On the nose? Well, I can't see anyone waiting. But if you're certain... Good evening, sir. I was asked to meet you. If you would like to come aboard, sir. The Alpha probe suddenly, inexplicably, returns. A piece of space history. Right. It's a unique opportunity. It must be recovered for examination. All right, but why can't NASA handle it? Alpha is powered by a Mark 24 nuclear rocket. If that probe re-enters the Earth's atmosphere, she'll burn up, explode, and contaminate the atmosphere with radioactive material. Only Terrahawks has the capability to bring her down safely. Okay, Johnson. We'll bring her down. Where? NASA insists on absolute security. Your base would be the obvious choice. One condition. The location of our base must remain a secret, even from you. Agreed. How are you doing, Kate? It's about finished. Kate, Hawkeye, I'm going up to Space Hawk to lead the recovery team. I'm lifting off in a few minutes. Right. Take care of the shop while I'm away. You got it, Tiger. Very appropriate. How's that? The title of the piece I'm working on is Liftoff. Want to hear it? Sure. Nice. Good news, devoted ones. The trap is set. At last, we will discover the stinking lair of the despicable Terrorhawks. Wonderful! This and more, I promise. Before the short shadows lengthen, their base will be reduced to a smoking cinder. A smoking cinder. What is this? A representation of the monstrous Neinstein Zelda. Stand clear. <laughs> Welcome aboard, Doctor. Thanks, hero. Well, what you're asking for is to convert that probe into a re-entry vehicle capable of power descent. Exactly. Okay. We carry standard space recovery equipment. We'll use a power delta wing under remote control. Good. That way we'll ensure the correct angle of descent and bring her down bang on target. Hawk nest? 10-10, hero. All right, lad. Hop down. I don't understand. I'm relieving you of your post. Huh? Over my burned-out circuits, you are. As senior NCO, I'm telling you for the last time. You may have seniority on Earth, but up here you don't carry any weight. What? 
Now you listen to me, lad. Will you two stop arguing and patch into the computers? There's a lot of design work to be done. So? Sometimes I think it was a mistake to let Xeroids have different characteristics. I don't know. Different accents. Maybe it's all part of Rife's Lich pattern. We're in position. 10-10, hero. All right, Zero. Get your team out there. Saw. Port secured. Port secured. Are you sure you can manage that computer all by yourself? You heard it, 101. Heard what? Zero. Get your team out there. My team. I'm in command. Huh. All right, lads. Have the double. Zero's inside the probe. No problems so far, Doctor. So far, no problems. Only the purest genius, Mother, could have conceived the idea. The Earthmen destroy their own base. And we are taking full advantage of their shock and dismay. <laughs> Launch our attack! Launch our attack! <laughs> Wonderful! Computer installed. Good work, Zero. Get your team back here. So. Very strange. Onboard computer programmed. 1010. Probe will commence re-entry in four minutes. Only two Zeroids have returned to Spacehawk. What? Sergeant Major Zero is still out there. Zero. Location report. Immediately. I said immediately. I'm still in the probe, sir. I had this theory that... Something isn't quite right here. You, Zero, are a robot. Robots never have theories. Get it? I've got a feeling I... I'm not alone. What is it? I don't know, sir. But it's close. Very close. Zero, I'm giving you a direct order. Get back here immediately. Confirm. Zero, do you hear me? He hears you no longer. Yes, Earth thing. I read your metal mind. You and it are now subject to my control. Your precious probe has been modified. It is now a gravity-triggered bomb being drawn inexorably to Earth 
and the Terrorhawks base. Doctor, we have a total systems failure. What? We can no longer control the probe. Uh, don't worry, Doctor. Uh, the probe is programmed to land at the Hawk Nest. It will do it automatically. It will do it automatically! <laughs> What's wrong, Mother? Kill. Kill the Earth thing. Kill the Earth. <laughs> My control is broken, but we will still succeed! There was a cube aboard? I'm afraid that's right, sir. It was horrible. Horrible. It held me in some kind of force field. I couldn't even think. Couldn't even think. Amazing. Stay aboard, Zero. We may need you. So? What's the situation? Jet and rocket engines still functional, but the onboard computer's damaged. I can't make contact. So it can't be reprogrammed. That's right, Doctor. There's no way we can stop it hitting Hawk Nest. And with a gravity bomb aboard... Maybe there's one way. Mary? Get Hawkwing Skyborne. 1010. I'm calling at 1030. Repeat, at 1030. I'm on my way. Zero. So. Patch into the main rocket ignition circuit. Bypassing the computer, sir? Right. I want you to be ready to fire those rockets manually. Manually? Mm. I'll be ready, sir. I want to talk to Kate as soon as she's skyborne. Will it work, Doctor? It had better. Alpha probe at 60,000 feet. Point of impact, Hawk Nest. Kate, we're short of time. Let's give it a try, Hawkeye. Say when and it's 10-10. Now. Alpha probe at 40,000 feet. See it, Kate. Have visual contact. Call the moment you've got that nose up. 10 10. There it is. Twenty thousand feet. We're going in again. Ten thousand feet. They're running out of feet. Nine thousand. Eight thousand. Seven thousand. Six thousand. Five thousand. Four thousand. Thousand, two thousand. Now, Kate. It's up. Zero, fire rocket engines. Saw. They made it. 
they made it. I never doubted it. No sweat, huh? Well, it's all in a day's work, lad. Terra Hawks, the emergency is over. I'm returning to Earth. I got the idea from reading about the old-time fighter pilots when they still had wars on Earth. Interesting. They used to flip over unmanned flying bombs with their wingtips. And it worked? It worked for them, and it worked for us. By the way, have you seen Sergeant Major around anywhere? I haven't seen him since you came down to Earth. Flaming thunderbolts. Zero, location report. I'm in the Alpha Probe, sir. As per your orders, approximate distance from Earth, one and a half million miles. For space sake, get out of there, Zero. Yes, sir. How long will it take him to spacewalk to Spacehawk? About three days. Tiger, how could you forget the Sergeant Major? Zero? <laughs> sir. Have a safe journey. Thank you, sir. Yo, this is the life. Out in the open, foot slogging it back to base. Space yomping, that's what it is. Still, it's a long way. Well, I think I'll have a little snooze. Speed track made racing history with Race and Chase, and they made headlines with Turbo RPS. But time marches on. Now, Speed Track introduces Slipstream Racing. Slipstream Racing, the first slot set with an automatic lane changing pace car. With fast driving, you can keep out in front of the pace car so you don't get blocked. With fast thinking, you can force the pace car into your opponent's lane so he's blocked. Slipstream Racing, one small step for Speed Track, one giant step for racing. So, day early, but uh, I did not read last week's Sunday comics. Is it, does anybody still read these outside of me whenever I get a chance? Uh, we got the paper by, started getting the paper by accident, and we got contact with them, and they still sent it to us. Um, so, I read the Saturday, Sunday morning comics. So, uh, so I hope you guys still dig Terra Hawks. I mean, I like the show, I really do, but it's so weird puppets man not gonna lie just weird me out so but we're going back to the animated universes of ulysses 31 um ulysses based on the uh greek mythology uh based on ulysses uh the guy who you know traveled around uh trojan horse uh troy all that fun stuff connected to this Fight the Cyclops in mythology. That's where we get this at. But it's way in the 31st century. The 31st century. So, a thousand years from now. And uh, we really need to get on the ball with the technology. So, <clears throat> this is Ulysses 31. It's episode 7. Enjoy. <laughs> Enjoy. 
It is the 31st century. Ulysses killed the giant Cyclops when he rescued the children and his son Telemachus. But the ancient gods of Olympus are angry and threaten a terrible revenge. Mortals, you defy the gods? I sentence you to travel among unknown stars. Until you find the kingdom of Hades, your bodies will stay as lifeless as stone. Ulysses, the way back to Earth has been wiped from my memory. Father! Oh, Father! You are alive, my son. This work seems to go on forever. We're entering an arid zone of thick galactic dust clouds. Thermal readings are very high due to the action of seven close suns. What a strange planet. It looks like a mushroom planet, Shurka. It does. <laughs> Maybe there are mushroom men to cap it all. I detect signs of biological activity. Life in a desert like this?
by Sisyphus, king of Corinth, wished to discover the secret of death for the glory of our people, I set forth to explore the desert of the Tartars. How can that be a crime, Merope? Sisyphus, dear husband, if you set out to discover the secret of the gods, you reap their anger. Dear Merope, the gods don't frighten me. My mind is made up and nothing will stop me. When I have found the secret of their immortality, I'll return to Corinth and we'll all enjoy eternal life. Merope, my sweet, don't worry. Zeus, is there no end to your vengeance? Sisyphus, find someone else to replace you and you may leave Olympus. Listen, Sisyphus. Someone, but you know very well there is no one. No one ever comes to the desert of the Tartars. How could I ever find anyone? There is one, an earthling named Ulysses, coming this way. Give him the work, and you will be free. Free? Free! Free! At long last! Father, be careful! Shirka has picked up signs of life in the desert. Continue your analysis, Shirka. You, my children, stand by. day to you. I'm seeking the way back to Earth. My name is Ulysses. I am Sisyphus, he whom the gods have made their victim. Oh, Father, Father! What has happened? Radio contact broken. Cannot get through. There seems to be something wrong with Ulysses' transceiver. Oh, oh. oh you're mad. What do you think you're doing? Ah, uh, Ulysses, you are my replacement. Oh! Sisyphus! No, you can't come back. Listen, I too want to escape from Olympus. We'll go together. No, you have taken my place. The gods have spoken. The gods, they're always against me. The shuttle is returning to the Odyssey. Father's back. You see, all my worry for nothing is all right. Telemachus, look out there! Is that really your father with controls of the shuttle? <gasps> Shirka, quick, can you give us a close-up? <gasps> I can hardly believe it. It worked. I am free at last. shuttle is preparing to land. What are your orders, Telemachus? My orders? Shall I allow the shuttle to land? It could be very dangerous if we let it Very, land. very dangerous. Let the shuttle enter, Shirka. Oh, but why? Do you know what you're doing? It could be an enemy. If something's happened to my father, this man knows about it. Let's let him in the spaceship. We'll hide if he's an enemy. We'll know it soon enough. Here's what we'll do. Here it comes. Shh, be still. Sisyphus, is there anyone on board?
Why, it's Father's belt. Look. What a pleasure. It's been a long time since I walked on such a firm surface. From now on, I am in charge of this vessel. <gasps> Telemachus, you me. Central Computer, I am your new commander. Prepare ship for takeoff. That's an order. I am a 31st century computer with personalized control design. I don't obey strangers. I'm in charge of this craft. Do as I say. I obey only Ulysses. Ulysses isn't coming back. Then I may take orders from Telemachus. Telemachus! Coffee, it's coffee break. One lump or two. Milk. Oh. Be Telemachus. Yes, I guessed it. Give orders for takeoff right away. Oh, never, you hear? Be careful, or I'll have to resort to force. Telemachus, I'm here. You ah, think, would you? Oh. No, no. Oh, Telemachus. Oh. Son of Ulysses. Inside is sucked down. Oh! Huh? The sand is a perfect trap. How many times I myself try to climb out of that hole? It's impossible. You thrash about in infernal sand. If Ulysses has fallen in there, he can't get out. What? It's not true! This filtering station is part of the gods' domain. I've thrown so much debris into it that it ought to overflow, but it has no bottom. <sighs> Telemachus, my boy, face the truth. If your father fell in, his body's probably ground to sand. No, my father's alive. He must be alive. If he fell into this hole, then I'll go in and look for him. Stop, no. Telemachus! I must save him. No, Telemachus!
shapes itself into new patterns. It's an infernal cycle. So these machines keep on recycling the same old material over and over. Let's get out of here. Yes. Oh! Look, it's Sisyphus! Idiot! Oh, I'm such an idiot! Cruel gods who have burdened me with such a foolish and useless labor. Do you have the right? pressure around the station. Thermal reading is rising. Unusual magnetism. Magnetic attraction of normally high. We must find Ulysses as quickly as possible. Do you hear, no, no? Now I know 
with the nature of my fate. The labors I do today in the sand, I'll redo tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, and the day after that. Ulysses, however, leaves without knowing his fate. Why didn't you leave with Ulysses? What are you talking about? Why didn't you try to escape? Why didn't you disobey us? Why? You would just punish me. Ulysses wanted to save you, and all you did was fight him. <sighs> That's true. Ulysses, forgive me. Please, you must forgive me. The gods confused my senses. Instead of escaping with you, I find you. Come back. Too late. Sisyphus, too late. You me! Sisyphus! Look, it's you, me, and Nono! Quickly! The station is being drawn into another dimension! <gasps> What about Sisyphus? Too late. If we set out to look for him now, we'd be cut off forever from the Odyssey and our companions. So now I know my destiny. Today's labor is tomorrow's, is the next days, the next years, the next centuries. For all eternity, I'll work in this place. racer like this stomper speedster a stomper that has more than speed a stomper that also has five position steering so that it's fast through the curves no matter which way they turn race with your imagination stomper speedsters race with stomper speedsters hey i know you guys look at boom justice machine uh, from Comico, written by one Tony Isabella from Ohio. I've uh, met Tony several times. Uh, good dude, good dude. Um, hoping to have him at one of our Pickle Cons coming up soon. And I love Just the Machine, Eat Your Elementals and stuff like that. Love those weird uh, indie book superhero teams. Love that stuff. It's good stuff. So, I hope you guys still dig Ulysses 31, uh, because we're going to keep it going. And since we're keeping this as Deke, we're going to keep it Deke, and we're going to keep it with some Captain N, the Game Master. Ah, man, Captain N, so weird. And people people go, well, the downfall was bringing Game Boy in. Game Boy came in the second season. So, you know, it was right away, but it was definitely marketing. 100% marketing. Got to bust that thing out, so... Um, here is, uh, Captain N, Episode 2, Season 2, and this is Queen of the Apes. 
Father disappeared and Mother Brain tried to take over Video Land. Our only hope lay in an ancient prophecy that a great warrior from another world would come to our rescue. I admit, I was a bit skeptical when Kevin showed up. But now, I don't know how we'd ever get along without him. like that. Yes, it is. There's more to being a ruler than that, Simon. There is. We are honored by your visit to our humble palace, Your Highness. Well, thank you for inviting us, Prince Plenty. in the world of insidious inventions. Behold, the brain swapper. Oh, goody, goody, goody. Hurry, show me how it works. First, place the brain cap like so. Then you attach the electromagnetic brain drainer like so. Then just push on the plunger and voila. <laughs> Give me back my brain before I duke you. I don't have your brain. You've got my body. Boy, it sure is empty in here. Hello? Hello? Excellent. Now all I need is a body. But not just anybody. I want a body that's worthy of my beautiful brain. I'll just input it in my computer. Let's see. I want silky hair, liquid gray eyes, a perky nose. Skin softer than girls we. Did you get all that? I want to be perfect. Princess Lana. Why? Why? Ooh, why she is perfect. After I transfer my superior brain into her inferior body, I'll be princess of video land. <laughs> Attacking the palace. Let's move it in, team. Have no fear, Princess Lana. I'll whip that monkey into shape. No, wait. Please, there's no cause for alarm. Everything's quite under control. We live in a paradise with everything we need. We even live in peace and harmony with Donkey Kong. See, uh, uh, 
as long as we keep the food flying, he leaves us alone. Ha! Huh, what a concept! They didn't have a banana button on my Donkey Kong game. <laughs> Simon, you picked up Donkey Kong's trail. Donkey Kong's body? <laughs> I love it. 
with my big beautiful brain and Dr. Carr's big powerful body. I'm twice what I was before. Video land is mine. Then we've got to get those brain switch back before it's too late. Just as I thought. These islands work like jet skis back home. Pull to go, push to stop. I'm going to stall Mother Brain. If she leaves, it'll be even harder to stop her. Mega Man, you and Kid Icarus go find Game Boy's brain in a bottle. And I, Simon Belmont, Ape Hunter, shall track down Game Boy's body. Oh, down, down! Uh, I better go with Simon. Are you gonna be okay on your own, Lana? Of course, Kevin. I know how to deal with Mother Brain. Okay, everyone be careful. Congo Land is full of dangers. You must help us. Donkey Kong can talk, and he's demanding we pay him tribute with all our worldly goods. That's not Donkey Kong, it's Mother Brain. I mean, it's Mother Kong. Huh? I'll explain later, just don't worry, I have a plan. But for it to work, I'm going to have to let Mother Kong catch me. Belmont, jungle explorer, will get that computer chip chimp away from those beasts. I'm having that gate for you, walking toupee. <laughs> See, you just have to know how to talk to them. Uh, nice work, Simon. Now maybe you better try plan B. Good idea. Simon, I think you just got elected their new leader. What? Let me be out of here! Hurry! Do something! <laughs> Maybe my freeze ray will work. <laughs> Let's go! In this heat, that ice block's not gonna last long. Taking them so long. How are you coming, Mother Kong? Almost ready, Barry. <laughs> What's wrong? Is my eyeshadow sneer? Of course not. They were just overcome with your beauty, right, guys? <laughs> yeah, right. Really? to switch back my brain. Nobody tricks Mother Kong. Hurry, Mega Man. You have to get the bottle to the top of the mountain. I just found a mega shortcut. 
We gotta move fast. Mother Kong's got Lana. You'll never stop me, Captain Numbskull. So say goodbye to your precious princess. I'm going to get her for the head. You can't win. That's what you think. I'm gonna finish what I started, putting my brain inside your body. Here comes trouble, Maximus. Swapper machine. Not if Simon Belmont gets it first. I'll teach you to hang around where you're not wanted, you little yo-yo. Get away from me, you little egg brain! Ah! Ooh, I guess it's now or never. Sir? I always knew you'd fall for me someday. <laughs> Get off my nose before I short circuit you! No! No! What have I done? She activated the brain flopper. I just hope Game Boy's all right. <laughs> short circuit! Short circuit! Short circuit! Someone stop me! We already did, Mother Brain. So this time I think we'll just let you go. Somebody! Help! We're coming, Mother Brain! Another hard day at the office, and not a hair out of place. Uh, Simon, I think someone's looking for you. <laughs> hey, wait a minute! Leave me alone! Stop! Wait! They won't hurt him, will they, Kevin? Nah, I don't think so. Just drive him a little bananas. Somebody help! Ultimate four-wheel drive machines, up, over, and through. Now, Stomper 4x4s come with roadblocks. Awesome. Use the roadblocks to bridge the ravine. Unstoppable. Stomper 4x4s with roadblocks that you build into challenges, that you build into bridges. Each Stomper comes with five roadblocks. The more you get, the bigger the challenge. Stomper 4x4 with roadblocks. Each sold separately. New from Tyco, of course. you guys are all weirded out by mother brain um i've talked to people who are absolutely 
horrified by that character. There's just something about it that makes them, weirds them out. Um, and it is, it is definitely weird. And the fact that it's the voice of Audrey too. Um, but I, I think it's fun. And I always thought it was funny that we got Mother Brain from Metroid, but that's all we got. So, but we're going to keep it going. And uh, we talk about going into the future and how we need to hurry up. Uh, we're going over to some Galaxy Rangers in the year 2086. Um, I know it seems like a long ways because in 2086, I will be 112 years old. <laughs> I, hopefully I will not be around in 2012, at, at 112 because uh, I don't want to be that old. Um, but they need to get on this because we need to get this technology soon. So <laughs> this is Galaxy Rangers and this is Psycho Crypt. Enjoy. Two peaceful aliens journeyed to Earth seeking our help. In return, they gave us the plans for our first hyperdrive, allowing mankind to open the doors to the stars. We have assembled a team of unique individuals to protect Earth and our allies, courageous pioneers committed to the highest ideals of justice and dedicated to preserving law and order across the new frontier. These are the adventures of the Galaxy Rangers. Good morning, Chiefy. Bioscans tell me you had a rough sleep again. Sleep plates should be operating properly. I turn them off. GV, ready a Ranger Interceptor. Use my priority code. But sir, you're scheduled for a mission briefing in one hour. You heard me. I'm leaving now. Sir, are you feeling all right? No. <laughs> GV? Take care of everything for me. You can count on me, sir. Be careful. You are entering Longshot airspace. Please identify. This is Captain Zachary Fox. Request priority landing. You are clear, Captain. Good morning. Please state your name. Zachary Fox. Voice ID positive, please wait. Hello, Matt. Captain? All right, let's see what we've got. You're right, Captain. Brain waves have been fluctuating every night for a week. I don't understand this. What's happening to her? Life signs are dropping, sir. Bring her out of it. Sir, I need command clearance for that. I said now, mister. Now, or you're going to be feeling the cold. Yes, sir. Well, here, what is it? Sir, Galaxy Ranger Fox is at the cryo chamber at Longshot. He's got a tech hostage. He's trying to revive his wife. 
Alert cue ball and patch us in. Easy, Captain. This takes time. Take her aim. Commander, I'm not going to hurt anyone. I know that. Put down the blaster and we'll talk. The dreams are real. Eliza is calling to me. Ah, uh, the Queen of the Crown is more like it. I suspect the Queen is finally using the other half of Eliza's Psycho Crystal. Using it to tap into the half around Eliza's neck. The distance is so great that Eliza doesn't stand a chance of surviving. It's true. If the Queen keeps tapping into Eliza's crystal, it would surely kill her. Zachary, she's trying to lure you back to the Psycho Crypt. Sir, we've escaped from the Psycho Crypt before. I say we go. There's no we. I'm going, and I'm going alone. I can't allow a Galaxy Ranger to willingly walk into a trap. I'm sorry, Zachary. Then I'm resigning from the Galaxy Rangers. Zachary, don't. Zachary, you must reconsider. I'm going after the other half of Eliza's Psycho Crystal. Zachary, I'm sorry, but you're confined to quarters until I can decide on further procedure. Do whatever you have to, Commander. But I'm not going to let her die. Status, GV. Two guards, heavily armed. You are on priority surveillance. I've been thinking, sir. You think Captain Fox is really cracking up? An experimental bionic system? Plus the Series 5 implant? He's totally unique. Gentlemen, you look very tired. Would you like a cold soda? Nah, we can't leave our post. Too bad. Perhaps if I call down for some sandwiches. Okay. It'll just take a minute. Hurry up. We can't leave the system unchecked. I understand. I'm hurrying. Come on, Zach. We must hurry. Nico, they'll bust both of us for this. If they can find any evidence first. Captain, come on. Move it! Move it! Transtar drives are optimum. I tuned them myself. Hey, don't start the party without me. Okay, the computers are going to be down for another minute at least. Good stuff, Doc. Doc! Thanks, all of you. I know. Tis a far, far better thing we do than we have ever done. Good luck, sir. We have an unauthorized interceptor launch. What? Elma, let's do it. Roger, Captain Fox. We've lost him, sir. We still don't know who knocked out the computer, turned off the security channel, and tuned up that interceptor. They still haven't been found? Terrible. It's a very suspicious case. Are you suggesting it was an inside job? Let's just say there could be a few court marshals around here. Yeah? Tell us about it. And in the meantime... You three are being sent out to bring Zachary back. Look, you can stop congratulating yourselves for being so clever. Don't think I don't know who was responsible. I don't think you understand the gravity of the situation. Senator Weiner is already raising cane over it. The whole Series 5 program is in jeopardy. You mean we get to go home? You, you get to serve two years on the Pluto base as Series 2 Rangers. That's worse than solitary confinement. And a lot, lot colder. What can I sell you today, friend? How about some information, Geezy? You! The Green Fox! How can this humble vigilant help a galaxy ranger? Hmm? I want you to get me to the Queen's Psycho Crypt. Nay, nay! You hummings are crazy! I don't look good as a slavery lord! <laughs> the Queen may think differently. Yay! How 
need I ever get involved with hobbies? I'll lead every single crown agent I can find right to here. No, no! Don't even say that! What's this heap? Hey, virtually priceless! The work of the great Padomo! Worth more than the price on your head? Well? There's a ship going to the Psycho Crypt tomorrow! It's taking a cargo of alien life forms for testing by the Crypt Masters! You're getting warmer. Huh? The Queen is getting desperate since she ran out of the Gherkin people! Now she has to find new life forms to power the Psycho Crystals! So she's trying out every life form she can find. Correct! All the way down to the cargo of Porfulian Spongefish! That's sitting in the hold of my good friend Captain Produce's spaceship, the Whispering Bafly! I'll also be aboard. I'll never understand hummings! Yeesh! We must bustle! Mm hmm. Here are the cargo crates of the sponge fish. These fish have about as much brain as a rock. <laughs> Goodbye, Ranger Fox. When the Queen captures you, remember that you did not see me. You have never seen me. I do not exist. I'll give her that message, Geezy. I was afraid you might say that. Now, just where might a wily pedulant be heading? Let's find out. Come on! What is that horrible noise? There's one way to find out. Over here. Hello, Geezy. Remember huh? us? Huh? Ah! Oh no, not more hoppings. Calling Captain Produce of the Whispering Bath Line. You are cleared for landing. Captain Produce. Here you are. Twenty more Vulian sponge fish, just as was ordered. If they're not healthy, you're in trouble. They're healthy, all right. Whether they'll stir or glow in the Queen's psycho crystals is quite another matter. Eliza's brain scans. Dream machine is ready, my queen. Good. It's time to give Galaxy Ranger Fox another dream. The fool will surely come to prevent me from using the only psycho crystal ever made from a human. The Eliza Fox crystal. Proceed! <laughs>
Send you to Earth as my most powerful slaver lord in charge of a battle fleet to crush the League of Planets. Ready the psycho chamber. Zachary, my husband, I've missed you so. You must be strong of heart. Our spirits will always be one. Zachary Fox, serve me well. You don't want to be looking over your shoulder for me, Petulant. You'd better be there. <laughs> you are fools doomed to be psycho-crystallized! <laughs> Prepare to dock. Which way? Straight ahead. Something's wrong. Hurry! Slaver Lord, look out! Now fight for me, Zachary Fox! No! Zachary! Zach, don't you recognize us? Look out! Zach, hit me, buddy. Nico. Zachary's body's in the psycho crypt. My plan worked perfectly. Now I will have all of the galaxy rangers. Down here. Doc, we've got to get him out. Huh? Company. Open the chamber, Doc. This crystal we got from the Slaver Lord must be attached to the crystal around his neck. Easy, Zack. Welcome back, Captain. I was dreaming. No time to reminisce. Open the bay doors! I feel so uncoordinated. My head! Just hold up there a minute longer, Captain. Tripwire, get in and disable their controls. Hurry it up! It's a trap! Oh, really? Hey, what are you doing in here? Hi, fellas. Have a few on me. Watch this, Doc. What a show-off. Come on, Tweaker, we're leaving. Move it, move it! Geezy, get on board, we're leaving. Huh? Our men's are always in a hurry. Fast 
quick and dirty, Geezy. Let's blow. I'm it. Yee. Are your weapon controls? What weapons? Hey, how about just zipping us into hyperspace? Right, don't rush me. Let's see. We found a harmonic factor in your bionic systems that was amplifying the Queen's dream signal. The dreams will end. But Eliza is still trapped. I'm sorry, Zack. But you know the Queen will keep her crystal as a trophy. Meanwhile, your badge, Captain. We'll free her one day. I know it. Supernatural! Now you can join the battle between brave Lionheart and the evil Skull and their eerie ghostlings. Lion, you're dying! Now, Master! They change to fight with ghostly might. Turn them into the light and they change into even more powerful creatures. Now, the whining me is free! Take this! Ah. Supernatural! Lionheart, Skull and Ghostling sold separately, new from Tonka. Superpowers Collection figures with power action each sold separately. Who's that? It's the ultimate evil Dark Side and his henchman Steppenwolf. Squeeze him, his power action is awesome. That they're no match for Superman or Red Tornado. We shall see. The Superpowers Collection Superman, Red Tornado, Steppenwolf, Dark Side, and other figures with power action each sold separately from Kenner. So, did anybody ever get the uh, Buck Rogers board game from TSR back in the day? You know, I had the Buck Rogers RPG. I have had the Buck Rogers game for the Sega that had a th the thing had a book in it like that thick. As your manual. It was horrendous. It was thick. And, uh, but I gotta know, because I never got to play this. I wanna know if this was fun. Every time I get a comic book and I see that, I'm just like, that looks like that would be time-consuming, yet yeah, maybe fun. And it's made by TSR, so who at that point was all about the D&D. And uh, if you ask my one friend back in high school, TSR stood for the reality store. And I would like, that'd be TRS, not TSR. It'd be TSR, not the reality store, TRS. I don't know how he got it from point A to point B, but he did. So I hope you guys are still enjoying the Galaxy Rangers, because that was episode 23. 23 man we've got a lot of episodes down to this but uh we're gonna keep it going and we're gonna move over to some mighty orbot mighty orbot fun cartoon great good animation uh good voice actors the whole nine yards and it is a shame that we did not get this in this potential more than one season uh, i know there's copyright issues with it i know that they were complaining because the robot looked too close to another robot Man, it's so disappointing. That could have been very cool. Um, I just always loved how the smaller robots formed this ginormous robot that's huge. But technically, that robot should only be maybe 12 foot tall. <laughs> so, uh, this is Mighty Orbots, and this is episode 9. Enjoy. Oh, no, here. Oh, no, here. Join the fun as the Mighty Orbots patrol the universe in another surprise-filled adventure. Sounds good enough to eat. <laughs> oh, no! Crunch! Orbots, stop him before he eats the whole show!
now return to Mighty Orbots. This is the ocean planet of Relos. And this is an undersea mining operation. Or is it? Later, Rob and the Orbots head for Rylos. Rondu says that the underwater mining operations on Rylos are under attack by a sea monster. <laughs> Yum! Space nut! Do you think our powers can stop a sea monster? Some powers you've got. The most you can do is turn into a can opener. I've got strength. Yeah, between your ears. If I were Bo's boyfriend, she'd have a built-in hairdryer, curling iron, manicurist. Uh oh. And you've got a built-in identity crisis. I think it's time someone took Tor down a peg, and you're just the Orbot to do it. We're coming up on Rylos. Orbot's mode, everyone. <laughs> beautiful underwater city of Aquaria, Rob and the Orbots meet Torkus, the head of mining operations. A pleasure to meet the mighty Orbots team. This is Amon, our oceanographer. I warned you months ago about Leviathan. Amon, not now. This is Leviathan. If we can't stop him from destroying our launching platforms, we'll have to shut down all our mining operations. Mighty Orbots is our last hope. Do you really think Mighty Orbots can stop Leviathan? If we can find him, we can stop him. Leviathan attacks our automated freighter subs. If you were to board one... It's worth a try. You'll regret it. Good luck and good hunting. I'm warning you, Leviathan's a tough fish to catch. That Amon's not exactly Captain Charisma. Leviathan, here we come. It's a big ocean out there, guys. Finding Leviathan may not be so easy. But what's this? A secret base near Aquaria? Whose can it be? It looks like there's more to Amon than the Orbots realize. We saved the sphere from Torcus. Now we must deal with mighty Orbots. Leviathan, awake! And speaking 
of the Orbots. What are all those starships for, Rob? To ship Aquarius ore throughout the galaxy. Oh. And what's that over there? Well, if we're lucky, it's another freighter sub. And if we're unlucky? It's Leviathan. is going to explode any minute. Leviathan, get out of there! There's trouble on the launch platform. And our sub's sinking! And Leviathan's getting away! Orbots, separate! Gordon Crunch, shut that star freighter down. Everybody else, save the sub. Ono and I will search for Leviathan. No sign of him anywhere. Wait, I'm picking up echoes of a brainwave beam from somewhere underwater. I'll sweep the area. You get a fix on it. One sub coming up. My turn. The sub has been saved, but how are Bort and Crunch doing with their problem? I've got to get in there. No problem. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Crunch. <laughs> Glad to help, buddy. Let's see. I think this one shuts the engines off. Oh! Yuck! The freighter is out of control. It's headed right for us. <laughs> Maybe this level will work. Oops. Yeah, you're marvelous, Bort. Hold it, hold it. What about me? I saved the sub. Oh, why don't you just admit that you are no match for a real hero? <sighs> There's no doubt about it. Someone's controlling Leviathan. Let's get back and tell the others. Come on, guys, we still have to catch Leviathan. And this time we're looking on his turf. Rob and the Orbots don't know it, but Leviathan is just the start of their troubles. Well, has mighty Orbots defeated Leviathan? I have had no word yet from the Orbots commander. This is risky, Umbra. If the Galactic Patrol learns that the mining operation is just a cover to search for the solar sphere, 
Precisely, Torcas. That is why it is up to you to make sure they do not discover it. I need the power of the solar sphere to complete my conquest of the galaxy. And only mighty Orbots can retrieve it from Leviathan. Mighty Orbots rescuing a shadow operation. I like that idea. <laughs> is getting stronger, Rob. Can you trace it to its source? I think so, given enough time. Look! The fire thunder. I think our time just ran out. like Rob and the Orbots are in for a wheel of a time. Scatter! Oh no! Here he comes again! Let's give him the old water weirdness play. Roger, Rob. This ought to cloud the issue a little. And now for a whirlpool bath. Looks like he could use a little kilt. <laughs> hey, we didn't even get our turn, she got... No, he's gone. For now. Did you manage to get a fix on that brainwave beam, Ono? Five miles due south at the bottom of the sea. But who could be controlling Leviathan? I'm betting it's Amon. Why, Rob? Because no one but Amon and Torcus knew we were in that sub. And Torcus said he was an oceanographer. He could have easily created a monster like Leviathan. Well, let's go find out. Back in Aquaria, Torcus is receiving some good news. So, we've got a fix on the location, and we're on our way there. I think it's Amon. Amon, of course. Give me your coordinates, and I'll follow you. Umbra was right. You can count on mighty Orbots to get the job done. <laughs> we're almost there. And we're not the only ones. Not him again. He's, he's gaining on us. So what are you worried about? You're a hero, right? Huh? Oh, oh, right. Look, there's some kind of door in that coral reef. It might be a trap. Yeah, but anything beats tackling Leviathan again. I was right. You're behind this, Amon. It's true, I admit it. There's no use hiding anymore. But hear me out. As Amon tells his story to Rob and the Orbots, Torcus's ship arrives at the Coral Reef. I created Leviathan by genetic breeding, and I implanted a control device in his brain, controlled by this cyber helmet. But why? Because Torcus digging is destroying the ocean's ecology, and I will not permit it to continue. But even if what you say is so, you can't shut down the entire mining operation. He hasn't been mining. He's been searching for the solar sphere, which has the power of a star within it. True, Elon. But you don't know all of it. I don't want the sphere. Umbra does. And your Leviathan swallowed it. Umbra? So shadows behind this. Give me that helmet, Amon. I'm going fishing. Inside Leviathan. We've got to stop him before he gets to Leviathan. <coughs> Oh, no, we're too late. If 
Leviathan. It's me, Amon. Torcus is controlling him now. He doesn't respond to you, Amon. Now I know how Pinocchio felt. The Silver Sphere must be in Leviathan's stomach. So, how do we get there? Whoa! It looks like Leviathan doesn't find anything hard to swallow. Charkas to Lord Umbra. I have the solar sphere. Excellent. I will send a ship immediately. Leviathan, take me to the surface. Now attack Aquaria and smash the city. You fools! I'm on my way out of here! What's happening to us? We're being absorbed into the bloodstream. As long as we humans stay in the bean car, we should be safe, Amon. I know I'm gonna hate myself for asking this, but what's that? This vein leads straight to... Leviathan's heart. If we don't time this exactly, we're pancakes. Get ready. Now! This way, up the carotid artery. Our only hope is to reach Leviathan's brain and deactivate the controlling device I implanted there. Sounds like a good plan, Avon. And speaking of plans, what is Torcus up to? Now to catch my ride off this waterlogged planet. Look sharp, gang. We're not out of this yet. I'm not worried. Borg will think of something. Women. We're approaching the brain. Oh, no! They're antibodies. They protect Leviathan system against invaders. And we're the invaders. We're getting in the clear now. Thank goodness. That was yuck. We should be reaching the brain any moment. There. The control device. Let's hope I can deactivate the controls in time. There, it's disconnected. Leviathan is now unconscious. Oh, no! According to this, he's built up too much momentum to stop. He'll still hit Aquaria! We've got to get out of here and stop him. This way, through the ear. It's the quickest way out. Orbots, unite! Ignition, Ono! Can even mighty Orbot stop the huge whale from crushing Aquaria? left to try. The direct approach. We're slowing him down. But we can't stop him. Give it all you've got, team. Gang. 
Now let's go get Torcus. <laughs> comes my ride home. With the Orbots trapped inside that whale, nothing can stop me. Mighty Orbots! Scratch one shadow ship. This can't be! I'm sure the Galactic Patrol will be interested in this. Talk about going out with a bang. Mighty Orbots has done it again. Well, I'm sure the sea life and the human life on Rylos can live in harmony from now on, Amon. Yes, thanks to mighty Orbots. And especially thanks to Bort. I've had all of this I can take. Ah, oh, come on, Tor. Don't be jealous just because I'm programmed for brains and you're programmed for brawn. Next time we all go fishing, count me out. to chaw a hanker for a hunk of cheese. <laughs> when my ten gallon hats are feeling five gallons flat, I got something planned, which is little cheese sandwiches. Come on. Here's a great little snack to tide you over till dinner. If you want something delicious and nutritious, cheese is a super snack. Look, a wagon wheel. When my get up and go has got up and went, a hanker for a hunk of cheese. When I'm dancing, the hold down in my boots kind of slow down, or any time I'm weak in the knees. A hanker for a hunk of, a slaver slice a chunk of, a snacker day is a winner, and yet won't spoil my dinner. A hanker for a hunk of cheese. Yahoo! Team America. You can make them go through water, or climb, or jump. It's Team America and the Super Stunt Dirt Bike. The Super Stunt Dirt Bike is designed with nubby wheels, so you can make them do high jumping stunts. Team America, you can make them go through water, or climb, or jump. It's Team America and the Super Stunt Dirt Bike, from Ideal. So, how many of you guys were a full-fledged member of the Icy Bear Club? Do you remember Icy Bear? Um, I... I want to say the last Icy Bear place that we had around here was at our Kmart before it closed. Uh, there might be some other places, but that's the last place I remember having Icy. A uh, little grocery store not far from where I grew up had one, uh, but I don't believe... I think the machine's still there. I'm 90% sure the machine's still in that old grocery store. Uh, it's definitely not Icy. It's just an Icy machine that they continue to use. But it's not the original old school ICs. So, all right. So we're gonna keep it going, and we're gonna go over to another Deke cartoon. Um, you know, I love reading these articles where they talk about why they picked up GI Joes because Deke stood for Do It Cheaper. 
But man, some of the animation that Deke put out in the early 80s, uh, not, their, not their late 80s run or early 90s run, uh, which they did tend to get cheap then, the animation was really pretty good. Uh, almost an anime style. I mean, go look at, well, look at Pole Position. Go look at Ulysses. Go look at the Littles. They all have an anime style. And uh, and that was before we knew what anime was. I mean, I was still back when everybody called it Japanimation. And I know that angers people. Uh, and I know it's anime. Uh, but everything was in the 80s was either A, no one cared that it was made in Japan. Uh, I didn't think about Voltron. I didn't think about Robotech. I didn't think about Battle of the Planets. I didn't think about any of those. It was just a cartoon. It wasn't until later when I was like, hey, maybe junior high, high school, it became Japanimation, then it became anime. Uh, because I'm old, it was. But uh, this is Pole Position, and this is Episode 8, and this is Dial M for Magic. Pole Position team into the unknown as they dial M for Magic. Morpsville after all. Wait a minute. Look, there's no work being done. The road's clear. What's going on, Tess? I don't know, Daisy, but it's sure not much of a welcome. getting mighty hungry for gas. Right. Some service. This'll wake them up. Could you ask your dad to come here and pump us some gas? You have to pump it yourself. Then get out of town as fast as you can. Friendly kid. Look, Kuma. J. 
just the kind of dinner I like. But where's the guy to take the money? Here. Aren't there any grown-ups in this town? You don't want to know what's in this town. Truck's all gassed up, guys. And we're going to find some dinner before we have dessert. What's that? And I thought this town was dull. Don't just stand there. Have your folks call the fire engines. There's no one to call. Then we'll take care of it. No, uh, you mustn't. First we get stuck in this town, then we find out it's cursed. Push the button, Daisy. Now we'll see if our equipment works. Howdy, Ted. Ready for some action wheels? some answers if we have to stay here all night. We've heard, but nobody's told us why. Evil spirits rule Morseville, dark and powerful demons. My magic is working to cleanse the town of them. The adults are assisting me. There must be no interference. I've heard a lot of stories in my time, but this one takes the cake. You don't believe? Then take my stick, and you will. accept gifts from strangers. Thanks. Zoltan's gone! People come and go so quickly around here. All I know is it's high time we called Uncle Zack. The snake is an Egyptian Naja Haji. It can be hypnotized into rigidity resembling a wooden stick. I knew that. Right. 
What's this all about, Uncle Zachary? Superstition, Tess. Morseville has always been isolated, but lately the phone lines were cut and the roads barricaded. But well, what's that got to do with superstition? Clearly, Zoltan is a fake. But the people of Morseville believe him. You've got to find the townspeople and expose Zoltan for what he is. Remember, what you see is only an illusion. Yeah, but some illusions bite. Come on, Dan. We've got work to do. Are we coming too? No. You both should have been in bed hours ago. You're leaving us alone? <laughs> Not on your life. Come on. in there. Looks like we just got a little magic on our side. There you are. Where are you taking me? What took you so long? Patience, Yolanda. It takes time to pull off a trick just right. You do all the grandstanding while I do all the work. Starting fake fires, painting myself up as a ghost, grabbing kids when nobody's looking. Quit complaining. Remember why we're doing all this. If you crooks aren't going to let me go, at least let me in on the secret. The great Zoltan never reveals his secrets. The best secret isn't a secret at all. Behold, a gold mining town buried and forgotten for a hundred years. I convinced those superstitious fools that evil magic was in the gold. They're digging it all up so that I can drive away with it. Straight to Acapulco. <laughs> How could any 
everybody be fooled by something so dumb? With a little sleight of hand, people will believe anything. There's just a movie that was projected on smoke. Turn it off, Kuma. But what about the ghost? Somebody hung from wires that were attached to the phone lines. Sultan tricked us. There's nothing to be scared of at all. Now it's your turn to show Zoltan a thing or two. Just tell us where he's taken your parents. You bet. You bet. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Come on, we'll show you. The truck won't hold much more gold, Zoltan. We must get rid of all of it. Keep digging. <sighs> it sure is boring having to keep an eye on you. It's no video game for me either. What's that? The rain soaking through the walls. If it breaks through, it'll flood the underground town. You've got to warn those people. Zoltan, the walls are giving way. Tell everybody to get out now. Come on. And as for me... Zoltan! <laughs> Sorry, kid. From now on, this hangs a solo. you don't. Oh, wait. I don't actually care. Yes. 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 Magnifico has everyone's wishes and he'll never no. give them back. Yes. Might as well get through all. Thank you. 
then. Hope you don't mind little mud wheels. A few spots on the paint job won't hurt an old car like me. was built on low ground and subject to flash floods. Eventually, the inhabitants covered it up and built a new town on top, one that eventually moved to even higher ground and became Morseville. The gold mine was lost to memory until Zoltan came across some old record and decided to take advantage of the superstitious townsfolk. Who are superstitious no longer, thanks to you and Dan. <laughs> What's that? Isn't another ghost? No, just Kuma finding out that if you stuff yourself, it comes back to haunt you. Thank you. 
terrific stuff, the animal. The animal. It's a big, powerful four by four. But when the going gets tough, it bears its claws to climb over anything that gets in its way. The animal. The animal. Can anything stop? The animal. The animal. The animal clawing its way to the top. The animal. Each sold separately. Batteries not included. New from Galoo. It's the real Ghostbusters Firehouse playset. Figment, our firehouse is haunted. No way. Oh, no. I've been gooped. Ding, 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 Ghost ding, ding, to the stadium. Ding, 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 ding. The real Ghostbusters, each sold separately, ah. assembly required. Hey, buddy, see anything weird? Uh. It's Tombstone Tackle. Uh. Don't lose your head. Take a hike. There's a policeman. Oh, oh no. It's, it's X-Cop. X-Cop. I can't believe my eyes. Whoa. We're not scared. Yep. I hope you guys dig pole position. I'm, I'm still want to know what the little rat, cat, raccoon, monkey thing is, but we'll never know. And the fact that they never made a toy of that is something that I you look at and go, wow. The fact that they made no toys from this is just amazing. So um, we're going to keep it going. We're going to move on over to the Marvel Universe with some Spider-Man. Um, remember we were talking about all the Spider-Man villains and they still make up villains for the show? Well, this is one of them. This is Professor Gizmo is the villain. All the cartoon. There's only a handful of cartoons. And freaking Spider-Man has one of the best rosters of villains ever. And they still make up villains for this cartoon. All the video game man was awesome. So, uh, and the fact that they put him into the, into the Spider-Verse stuff, that is great. Uh, but this is Spider-Man episode 16, and this is the unfathomable Professor Gizmo. Spider-Man! a depth of 1,053 feet. Attach the transistor antenna to the sunken gold ship. Now my powerful little box will take over by remote control. Thank you, Spider-Man. You have just helped Professor Gizmo, master criminal, recover the world's largest sunken treasure. I no longer need your help. Farewell has been... works perfectly. Now I need the real Spider-Man, for only he is strong enough to withstand the undersea pressure. Now to set the trap to catch a web spinner. <laughs> I'm big party on the boss's million dollar yacht and I gotta go get my date and take her to the pier by subway. Okay, folks, let's have all your money and goodies and nobody will get hurt. Come on, now! Maybe if I ignore them, they'll be nice muggers. Young man, that is my purse! I was afraid of that. Hey, that guy! Dad, forget it! No place he can hide, eh? We'll save him for last. Hope the tux is wrinkle-proof. Here he goes! Hey, it's Spider-Man! <laughs> expecting Captain Kangaroo? to spend more time with you fellas, but I see you're hung up tonight. Gather up your goodies, friends. Hey, what's going on? They're all yours, mister. Just in time. This is my stock. My mask. Well, I sure won't need it. 
here to JJ's yacht party. Wow, a Halloween mask for the kid. Better yet, a hairnet for the wife. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Jonah's Whale for our annual Diamond for the Deprived charity cruise. My helpers will now pass among you with baskets for your diamonds and jewelry. But, boss, don't you want pictures of the donations? You got enough pictures. Get the donations. Heave two. And pour the loot into the ice-making machine. For the next cannonball has your engine room's name on it. The monitor! It can't be the monitor. The monitor was sunk over a hundred years ago. Impossible. It's got to be a fake. Without my Spidey mask. <laughs> A cool million in hot ice. No more need for the monitor. Back to the bottle. I can't believe it. Did you get pictures, Parker? How could I, JJ? You've got my camera. Excuses, excuses. That's all I get. The nation and the world were stunned today by the bizarre robbery at sea involving what was believed to be the historic monitor. What was once called the Yankee cheese box on a raft rose from the bottom of Chesapeake Bay, where it was sunk some 100 years ago. Rats, my monitor caper didn't draw flies, let alone Spider-Man. But this one will. When the Smithsonian Museum loses the Lindbergh plane, the spirit of St. Louis. But first, the diversion. What's happening? The tanks, look! Where are they going? Nobody's in them! I'm standing here near the Smithsonian Museum as two tanks slowly circle it. Meanwhile, the entire Washington Military Corps is standing by. Gotta get to Washington. Fast. And cheap. The military may not be able to move in, but Spidey can. board this plane without a ticket. Don't worry. I promise I won't get in the plane. I told her I wouldn't get in the plane. Stewardess, th there's a man with a mask on looking at me from outside of this window. Oh, I think you've had enough, sir. Well, I can't waste any more time. I'll activate the spirit of St. Louis. Look, the engine's starting, and there's no one in it. Hey, is this part of the tour? As I thought, no one there. It's another monitor job. At last, he's here. This time I'll get some pictures for Jameson. Stop! You are surrounded by the United States Army, Navy, and Marines. And the Air Force is on its way. As long as I'm not outnumbered. Couldn't have timed it better if you tried, Parker. The wall crawler looks like a perfect fool. Don't I know it? First the diamonds, now the plane. Who is the unknown thief and how is Spider-Man tied in? I'm gonna run this picture every day until I get the answers. Hey, look. Those trains are out of service. But they're moving! The subway system will be clogged for hours while I unclog several of the larger vaults and safes around New York. Hey, you know, it seems funny. Nobody coming up from that subway station. Tell you something funnier. Yeah, what's that? Your truck is taking off down the street without you, Zid. Oh, that's funny. Very fu- Hey, what's going on? Collect 
the booty with the street cleaner's truck. If this doesn't bring Spider-Man out of hiding, nothing will. Almost too easy. The subway jam has tied up every cop in town. But where is Spider-Man? Hey, what's going on? Didn't the electric company pay their bill? Fun city, my foot. Face it, the Big Apple's right. Master control. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Look, no time for trick-or-treaters, pal. Just a minute, you're the real article. Recognize him? Spider-Man. Need a hand, guys? What we need is a bulldozer. All the trains are stuck. Hmm. If that one car was moved, then all the others could move. Sure, but how do we move it? I thought you'd never ask. Hey, where are you going? No place special, just got me a train to move. So, my little subway game was spoiled by Spider-Man. Well, it's time to play my trump card. First to stash the goodies. Once again, the mad, mysterious force has struck. Whoever's behind these bizarre crimes is able to control anything with an engine. The mysterious Spider-Man seems to be connected with at least two of the crimes. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, Spider-Man is behind these crimes. Do you think that's fair, Jonah? Fair? Don't give me fair. I'm out over a million for my charity. I want it back. And I want Spider-Man in jail where he belongs. I think Robbie's right, J.J. Who asked Robbie? And where have you been? I was stuck in a subway. Ah, I've had it with excuses. I want to know who's behind these crimes. Wonder if that might be your answer. We'll trade all loot for Spider-Man tomorrow, noon, Herald Square. Professor Gizmo. Professor, Professor Gizmo. Gizmo. Ah, somebody's pulling our leg. Guess again. Well, that's Lindy's plane, all right. But how do we know Gizmo will really give the loot back? It's obvious. He and Spider-Man are in this together. But if they're not, tomorrow Spider-Man will be taking a terrific risk just showing up. Two minutes to twelve. Where's Spider-Man? And where's Parker? Parker's out taking pictures, Chief. Haven't seen. Uh, hold it. Look. The insect. Okay, Chuckles, here I am. I'll make the trade. But not until I'm sure the stolen goods are returned. Mr. Jameson, I didn't know there was a Spider-Man balloon in this parade. What Spider-Man balloon? Holy mackerel! Gee, that is the nicest thing anyone ever did for me. It's a paralyzing gas. But my mask must be acting like a filter. Oh no, my balloon! I've got you, Spider-Man. I knew you'd be caught up in your own image. This is one ego trip you'll never forget. Okay, okay. Now tell me the bad news. No way, Gizmo. Me help you? Are you kidding? All you have to do is dive down to the El Conquistador and attach this little transistor antenna. My gizmo box will do the rest. That's over a thousand feet. What makes you think I could stand the pressure? Come, come, Spider-Man. Stop stalling. We both know an ordinary spider can go much deeper than man. He creates his own diving bell out of webbing. With your spider power, it'll be no problem. Okay, but don't tell me your little gizmo box can lift a ship from way down there. I'll prove it. I used to work with the famous scientist Richard Robbins himself, that rotten thief. He took dozens of my brilliant inventions. One night, we were working late in the lab on this very... It's time to test the box. Will you this obsolete robot? Ah, my dear faithful gizmo, this day I become the most famous inventor in history. You'll 
you'll always have my gratitude. Wrong, Dicky boy. My turn. No, Gizmo! No! He's safe. Somewhere. I'll return the loot and you'll help me, Spider-Man. And the box will work. We're on our way right now. We drop anchor here, Spider-Man, and you start your descent to my fortune. I told you, no deal until I have proof you returned the goods. Would you believe it if J. Jonah Jameson tells you it's been returned? Well, he's no George Washington, but try me. J. Jonah Jameson here, president of Jameson Television Network. This is an on-the-spot report of the raising of the El Conquistador by Professor Gizmo and his notorious assistant, Spider-Man. You're seeing the world-famous spirit of St. Louis returning to the Smithsonian. Earlier, the diamonds were returned. All so that Spider-Man would aid this legal salvage operation. But I'm betting both those crooks were in it from the beginning. There you have it, Spider-Man. I've kept my end of the deal. Now it's your turn. And uh, <laughs> remember, all the world is watching. I ought to have my head examined. Prepare for descent. Our cameras are watching Spider-Man create a diving bell. The type only spiders make. Now he's attaching a lifeline web to Gizmo's equipment. Let's get it over with. Might as well get some shots while I'm down here. Camera is following Spider-Man's actions below the sea. You're now at 800 feet, Spider-Man. Do you see the cave? Yeah, there it is. But something's moving. Uh-oh, an octopus. And a big one. Just my luck, he thinks I'm his girlfriend. Gotta get out of this. It's nice to be loved, but this is ridiculous. for air. <laughs> Close. You're now at the ship's stern. Attach the transistor transmitter. I hear you talking. Oh, no. More trouble. Lost half my oxygen. Even with spider power, the pressure down here is getting to me. That does it. Okay, Gizmo, back to the ranch. I'm activating the ship now, but you'll have to guide it out. Grab hold of the rudder. Come on, come on, take her on up. Spider-Man, you didn't really think I was going to give the government half a billion. Thank you for your help, web slinger. I don't need you anymore. He's cut Spider-Man loose! I expected some kind of double-cross, but why did it have to be on television? Good thing I'm not bashful. Air's running out and... Oh... I'm an accessory to the theft of the century and now bait for Jaws 3. Take a look at this, folks. A great white shark is heading directly towards Spider-Man. No, wait! It's heading toward our television cameras! We lost the underwater camera. My gosh. A video appetizer. And he's still hungry. Dumb. Fighting on the half shell? No 
thanked. Webbing, do your job. Running out of air. Heading that away, baby. That's it. Go after the big delicious boat. Close enough. Here's where I get off, big fella. This works. A gizmo for the gizmo. I've done it. I've raised the largest sunken treasure in the world. It's mine. All mine. Amazing! Fantastic! The Spanish ship has surfaced, and Gizmo has claimed it as his own! But where's Spider-Man? <coughs> Made it! And there's Gizmo. He jumped on the El Conquista door, just as I planned it. Like a fish, I'll be next. Quick, follow that gold. In a submarine, JJ, maybe. In a helicopter, no way. Then, then follow that shark. And go Spidey down the drain. JJ, we can't leave Spider-Man behind. Why not? But he's being pulled under by the whirlpool. JJ, you saving Spider-Man's life. Think what a story that'll make. Don't hold your breath. He's going under again! Boss, you're on TV, live, now! Risking our own lives, we're descending to save that poor criminal's life. <laughs> this makes me a hero. Closer! Closer! I can't believe it, but I'll force myself. Jackie, this is worth everything! Get a shot of this, Robbie! I'm a hero! Got the camera all set, Jonah. Do I have to touch him? Say, not bad, Robbie. <laughs> Better than you, Parker. Uh, sorry I wasn't around, JJ, but I promise you one thing. I'll be there the next time you save Spider-Man's life. Yeah, you'd better be. What? The next time? The next time? <laughs> <laughs> the next time, I'll drop him. Sidewinder's got the stunt shifter. Sidewinder. 
with sure grip steering, super sleek styling, and a slip shifter that can spin you into excitement. Sidewinder, the horse behind her. Sidewinder Cycle with Stunt Shifter. New from Tonka. You know, there's a book. We were talking about that. Boom. Armor from Continuity. Man, this stuff was good. Great artwork. Decent stories. Not the best stories, but decent. And I don't know why this never took off. Um... They keep trying to bring it back every so often, but I don't think it'll ever see the light of day. Uh, they put the, uh, a tribute book together a while back uh, that showed the first issues of several of the books printed in a new format, larger format, but black and white. But when Neil Adams gone, I don't know if we'll ever see it, and I think we should. Somebody, somebody should pick this up and continue it. I'm just saying. Because a lot of these guys, man, Pete Stone is still out there. Um, we had other people that were doing artwork very similar to, uh, old, uh, Neil Adams, but they should jump on it. That's all I'm saying. So I know weird, right? The, 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 the Spider-Man villains that they just create for the show are so hokey, so goofy. And we have such cool villains. I don't know why, but, uh, we're going to keep it going with some spiral zone. Um, love Spiral Zone. Can't claim enough. Let again, I will put this out there until the day I die. Somebody needs to pick up, somebody needs to jump on this property to make toys. Maybe not make them as good as the original line, but do something. Looking at you, Nacelle. I'm looking over at you at Ramen Toys. I'm looking at you, Boutiques, Toys, NECA, whatever. Somebody needs to jump on Spiral Zone. That's all I'm saying. Uh, but this is Spiral Zone, episode 17. Breakout. Enjoy. Surrender or pay the consequences. Looks like we're coming to a commercial. Let's fight the zone. Oh, I gotta tell you, Commander. If things don't get any more exciting, I'll probably fall asleep. Come on, Max. You know how important this duty is. That is right, Max. We must protect Dr. Lawrence and his scientists when they're on field test. Zone alert! Hit it! Okay, everyone, we're going in, so stay on your toes. Thank you! Oh, sweet! 
go check on this. Careful, Commander. Ah! your plans for him, Commander? Well, Black Hills Maximum Security Prison isn't far from here. They'll hold him till McFarland and the UN decide what to do. Hmm. I know what to do. Lock him up and throw away the key. Easy, Tank. There's such a thing as due process of law, you know. Yeah, but due process didn't help my little Joseph when he was trapped in the zone. Right at home here, Razorback. Let's go. In case you're wondering, mister, we've handled tough guys like you before. Craig. Ow, Craig. Is that you, Craig? A uh, long time no see, huh? Hey, it's my main man, Al Grant. We used to run together in Jersey. Only now, he's one of Overlord's Black Widow. Overlord, they've captured Razorback. Excellent. My plan is working. That used to be the most undisciplined bunch of cutthroats on the face of the planet. I don't like it. Razorback's got them eating out of his hand. He's up to something, General. And he's not smart enough to do it on his own. Overlord must be behind it. Well, then let's simply pull Razorback out of there and put him somewhere else. I can't risk it without support troops. And I can't get any there till tomorrow. We've got to know what he's up to. Well, then someone has to go in undercover. I will go, Commander. Uh, thanks, Cat, but our uh, prisons aren't co-ed yet. Hmm, really? How about big? No, we need somebody with an American background. Let me guess. Farmer Jones's little boy just volunteered one more time. Oh, well, it's absolutely smashing. It's so real, the hair even grows. Just call me Franklin Snake Dubois. Excellent, Max. Even the voice. That's due to the vocal modulator. In the base of the mask. And now for the finishing touch. A micro spy camera and microphone disguised as a contact lens. We will see and hear everything you do in prison. How are you going to make friends with Razorback, Max? He would not trust his own mother. <laughs> no problem, little buddy. I'll just show him how valuable I am to him. I saw gun running, armed robbery. You've been a bad boy, Dubois. <laughs> You'll do just fine in here. He's too bad to be true. How come I ain't never heard of it? Who are you jiving, skunk? You knew me in Leavenworth. You remember Leavenworth, where you turned stoolie? Stoolie? Who you calling stoolie? Why, uh, you are you Skunk and I go back a ways, Dubois. Just made a real bad mistake. There's no mistake. If he's pulling the same scam as in Leavenworth, the proof's in his cell. I sure hope the warden came through with that transmitter. Mm-hmm. Just like in Leavenworth, another calm link. Who you reporting to this time? The warden? The cops? The zone riders? Hey, but I, I, I didn't... I... You know what, skunk? I take care of Stoolies personally. 
Hey, wait, 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 be cool, man. You don't want to wind up in solitary. <laughs> Maybe I got a place for you and my organization after all. Me and myself are meeting tonight. This ain't over, sucker. I'll see you later. According to my agents, the reinforcement troops will board there. Then ride past this mountain to the Black Hills prison. If we blow up the side of Mount Rushmore, we'll wipe out the troops. Bandit, I need a full zoner battalion on standby alert. It is already done, Overlord. It seems I can always depend on you, Bandit. And I expect no less than a perfect performance from the rest of you. I hope that is clear. Infantry Commander, assemble your troops at the rendezvous point. Veteran form MCC, pronto. My guess is that they're going after the troop train, but we can't get a warning through to it. Communications are jammed. I'm afraid we're not having any luck either, General. It must be Overlord's doing. Well, we'd better get to that train fast. Hit it! You'll keep an eye on Max? Oh, absolutely, Commander. Just remember, pack the charges in good and tight. You don't have to tell me what to do, Bandit. All right, let's go. Bandit! Reaper! Overlord, we seem to have uninvited guests. will be back. And now we return with more Spiral Zone action. Okay, 
But the rail line's totally blocked. The troops are going to have to hike in. And Max? Okay so far, General. But things could get nasty now that those troops are delayed. That's him! Don't bother making it look like an accident. We ain't gonna be here much longer. Skunk says, bye-bye, Snake. Yeah, well, I ain't gone yet. <laughs> Hurry up. Get him over here before the guard comes back. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, dude, but uh, they're getting kind of monotonous. Hey! Look out! Just lost the contact lens camera. From now on, we won't be able to tell what's happening to Max. <laughs> Listen, you guys, help Overlord wipe out the Zone Riders, and you'll all be Black Widows like me. Miss Call, let's go. Oh, excuse me, sir. Did you wish room service tonight? Listen, I gotta get a message to General McFarlane and the Zone Riders. You're right. Man, you got to listen. I'm not really a con. I'm Max Jones, one of the Zone Riders. See? Uh, I'll be right back with the warden. Well, well, what have we here? He wouldn't make much of a Black Widow anyway. You're just setting these cons up. They don't know that they're gonna wind up as Overlord slaves, like all Zoners are. <laughs> you fool. You suppose they believe a Zone Rider spy? You're the icing on the cake, Jones. <laughs> You're my insurance policy. You're gonna get the ride of your life. Take him! <laughs> the prison break should be starting any moment now. When the Zone Riders try to stop the convicts from entering the Zone, we'll crush Courage and his group from behind. You have your orders. Do not fail me.
Okay, everybody, into the zone. Hit it! For taking such a risk, Max. So how you feeling? Well, not too bad for someone who's been beaten, tied to a bumper, and run through the zone. Glad to have you back, Lieutenant. <laughs> me too. Thanks for not blowing up that vehicle I was on, Tank. Had me worried there for a minute. <laughs> I simply did not want to ruin a perfectly good armored car, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be right back with more Spiral Zone action. And now we return with more Spiral Zone adventure. Earth's most powerful soldiers fight the Spiral Zone. Our world calls for courage, peace and freedom. We must own. Hello, 
the air. So many stories to be read. Oh, my. So read a book and take a look. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> At the TV in your head. <laughs> Conklin's about to attack Max Dillavalier. Let's have the demolisher to the rescue. Ideal's new Roboforce. Warrior robots with gripper bases and crusher arms, each sold separately. I'm just escaping. Okay in there? Okay, Dad. But we won't be safe till we're rid of Hundred. Hundred the Conqueror, Max Steel the Leader, Wrecker the Demolisher, each sold separately. New from Ideal's Roboforce. Alright. Hope you guys still dig Spiral Zone. Very fun cartoon, very very dark and bleak, but uh, yeah, I I this is a cartoon like I said before I did not watch on Saturday mornings. I watched it uh, I think on the weekends, uh, but it was a weekday cartoon in some some markets. Um, yet again, syndicated, so you never knew where it was going to be, uh, but I like it. And Breakout, so it's named after the. Uh, the game that the little little panel goes across. Boop, 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 boop. boop. <sighs> Love Breakout. Still do. That's still a fun little game to play. Especially when it starts getting really fast. Jeez, it's crazy. So, we're going to swing on over to some biker mice from Mars. Um, yet have been picked up uh, because of Ryan Reynolds and the Cell Toys. He's going to release new biker mice from Mars toys. Um, and then the cell verse, which is weird. Me and Joe had this discussion. Just a weird bunch of toys that they're trying to make into one cohesive universe. It's just weird. But uh, maybe. Because we're getting new Power Lords figures, and that's awesome. So this is Biker Mice from Mars, and this is a scent of a memory of a far distant cheese.
Lemberger had this reception all planned. Yeah, and really hors d'oeuvres. Well, not yet, bros. Fire jets. That's 
it froze, refueled, reloaded, and ready to rock. my wallet, Charlie. Don't give it here. No way. Hey, it's my wallet. Come on. Just want to see how many girls' pictures you carry in here. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> what? It's my baby picture. <laughs> I know, but <laughs> where's your hair? <laughs> oh, man, come on. I'm a mouse. We don't have hair when we're babies. <laughs> but you're so fat. <laughs> hey, a little chubby, maybe. Chubby. <laughs> Man, you look like baby Huey with a tail. <laughs> and from the looks of things, you weren't potty trained either. <laughs> <laughs> well, my mom thought I was cute. <laughs> and look how right she was. <laughs> Would you look at this dinky little tail? <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, Charlie girl. Now, fun's over. Give it back before I go. Oh. Looks like the heat is on. All right, you goons. Start wrecking up that moolah. Ooh, lovely, lovely money. <laughs> Sorry, you ugly creepazoids. There's a substantial penalty for illegal withdrawal. And you're looking at it. Gracious, how intimidatingly infused with machismo. Are you impressed, Gorgie? <laughs> Not so as you'd notice, Strella. Let's stomp them. Oh, looks like our problem's getting bigger than we thought. Oh, mama. Hey, you mice. Check out these amazing feats of strength. Oh. Okay, Vincent, keep him busy. Moto and I'll take him from above. through downtown, they mean business. Yeah, so let's give them a warm civic welcome. Now! Yes! Direct hit! Yeah, that should put a cramp in their style. Uh, throttle? We do beg your pardon. But does this hunk of junk belong to you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You mamma jammas, we're gonna take them down. And we hit them with our best shot. Didn't even rock them. Which means we better roll. These babies have Limburger stink all over them. We need to find us some answers. And I know just where to ask the questions. How too, too disappointing. The mice are turning tail. <laughs> they must have a flea problem. <laughs> Out, come out wherever you are, you reeking cheese log. Hey, he ain't here. And from the smell of fresh air, he ain't been here for some time. Oh, help me! Huh? Huh? Oh, yuck! Talk about your toxic spills! Those biker babies got big trouble now. Monster-sized trouble. <laughs> Start squealing, Grease Pig. Where did these monsters come from? And where's that rancid cheese breath boss of yours? Uh, I don't know. Uh, something went wrong with the transporter. M -m 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 Mr. Limburger bought the monsters here, but then he got sent somewhere else. Now the monsters are taking over. <laughs> This is bad news, bros. Yeah, the monsters are doing more damage than Limburger would. That cheese ride brought him here. He must not have had a control of Sure, but now he's gone. Yeah, which means there's only one thing we can do. I know it stinks, but... Oh, man, you don't mean... Bingo. We gotta bring back the big cheese. This is all your fault, you hydrocephalic headcase. <laughs> Push the button. How about you, uh, Bill's machine? Is there no escape from this asinine asteroid? I believe that there is a transport. 
teleport booth is somewhere on the surface. Then let us discover it. Boys, boys, boys. One thing we don't have, sweetheart. Look, guess who's coming to dinner? Would you care for some mouse munchies, Monsterella? Oh, Gorky, you know what I like. <laughs> Watch it, sweetheart. These mice got teeth. Whoa! <laughs> Poor Gorky, baby. Monsterella, kiss it, make it all better for her. Okay, Charlie, ma'am. Hold the fort. Yeah, we'll try to buy you some time. Because us Martian highlight films are about to... Rock and roll! Sure, go out and play and leave me to do all the dirty work. Good luck, guys. Watch your tails. <laughs> Didn't we play this game before? Yeah, but this time we're on Limburger's home feet. What do you mean we don't care if we trash the place? Exactly. So let's play dirty. Oil spill, now! Guess again. They're back for a rematch. And this time it's personal. Help me, you dilatory dolt. Namely, Vinny's baby picture. Oh, man. Better 
enough, I'm gonna be monster mulch. I gotta be humiliated, too. <laughs> it's working! That infuriating female is actually making them laugh! That little hairless punk! <laughs> oh, that kinky little... Forget it. Just forget it. You can go ahead and eat me now. <laughs> Look at that. Now you're at our level. And that's right where we want you. <laughs> Let's get these goons up to the transporter. Hmm. Perhaps discretion is the better part of valor. Huh? Run! Well, takes care of them. Yeah, too bad Limburg had to come back, though. Yeah. Hey, you want to trash this place before we leave? Nah, forget it, bros. Oh, man, you're a buzzkill. Well, I figure Limburger's had enough for one day. Yeah, and we still haven't had breakfast. Ow! Make mine over easy. Let's ride! Drat those sort of dormice. Don't they ever use doors? <laughs> well, uh, look on the bright side, your fulsome fragrant mess. At least your building is still standing for one. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of loose bricks, though. Huh? Nice pit, my dear, dear boy. Yeah, boss? You are a loose brick! Uncle Dead Boys. You can make the good guys better. Arms, boys, roll them! You can make the bad guys better. Saw boss, roll them into battle. Real warriors. Quick changing fighting machines. Bad guys approaching. Quick stack and attack. You can stack, attack, 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 Warriors. Wheel Warriors vehicles each sold separately. Some parts not for use with some toys. New from Mattel. Now, when you're done riding home, we're gonna go for... Got a second? Right back. No funny stuff. Why just sing them with water when you can zap them with color? New motorized zapping. Yeah, one more thing. Since you can't disappear, the color does. Stop it! from Enterjack. Color refills sold separately. There he is. One of the coolest toys that I've never owned. Rom the Space Knight. If anybody has a Rom the Space Knight, they would love to sell me at a decent price. Let me know. I, would, I want one really bad. So I could put him up around here. Or if you just want to donate him, that would be awesome. Huh? So... Hope you guys still dig Biker Mice from Mars. So, I do. I think it's a fun little cartoon. Still a little weird. I'm not going to lie. The, the, they have the tension between the characters, um, which is just weird to me, but whatever. So, we're going to call it a night, and or call it a, uh, an afternoon. Uh, I'm going to skip doing uh, vinyl reviews. Okay, so this is when I normally talk about vinyl, but we're going to move vinyl reviews over to the Talk and Roll channel, uh, you know, where the music is. Uh, but I do, I showed it last night, I got a signed copy of Samantha Fox. Boom! If you were a dude in the 80s, you had a crush on Samantha Fox. So, and I got a Samantha Fox autograph, finally, thanks to my buddy James Garrett. James is great at getting autographs. Uh... If you're looking for autographs, let me know, and I will point you towards James, and he can hook you up. Uh, so he is a autograph collector, uh, so he pretty much guarantees everything. He's been able to verify autographs that I have, so you know it's that cool. So and hopefully we're gonna put a, 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 a bonus past the credits here, so kind of keep an eye on that. But uh, all right. So, you know, I'm going to do the rundown, as always. 
Mondays, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, Group Therapy TV. I got interviews with people from all over doing really cool stuff. Got an interview coming up with Chris Hahn, who has been a stuntman in a bunch of big movies from Netflix. Uh, he's been in a bunch of uh, horror and action movies, uh, lower budget ones. Uh, he's out of Ohio. Um, he was at our con, ended up talking to him, really cool guy, um, really hit it off, uh, talking wrestling and movies. Uh, we're planning on doing some work together, but we're having him on the show. Uh, and then Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, go over there and check out Talk and Roll, the Talk and Roll channel. I'll put a, I'll put a link down below so you guys can go over and check it out. If you like music and really interesting stories and fun you'll love it because we have that we have talk and roll uh you can check out our twitter or in our uh you know tiktok twitter facebook all that stuff we've got a lot of cool stuff coming there we're doing interviews with bands all over the world so that's a big ones. we have some big bands hopefully fingers crossed i got some really really cool guests coming up uh huge guests uh, 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 you know, you got like top tier, you know, like your Metallica's and your Anthrax Slayer stuff like that. Uh, the band we're looking at is just boop right there, just below that, just, just, just up below that. So that's what we're working on. So we got that. And you watch Sci Fridays last night. You watch the Saturday morning serials right now. So there's that. So you, I know you guys are here for those. And um, yet again, I want to do a shout out to all you guys for watching, all you guys down below, all you guys who send me emails, all you guys who check up on me when I'm busy and 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 reach out to me. Uh, it means a lot. Um, it does. It does a lot. Um, you know, I try to keep this place drama free, which I hope I do. I know that we had some drama, but I hope we took it down, chilled it out because I'm having fun. Um, but man, we're, we're all people just trying to live in a simpler time and remember what it was like to be a kid. Um, and just enjoy yourself, have fun, take a few hours out of your busy, hectic week and be a kid again. Um, I get a little bit more of a privilege to that than most people. Uh, because I do own a store that sells toys and comics and stuff like that. I do get to live a little bit like a kid. And I get to spend time with the Vents, who makes me be a kid. But I want you guys to be that. I want you guys to, to feel that way too. I want you to take a little bit of time and be a kid. Have fun. Go buy some Legos. Build a, build, build, build a castle. Um, go, go take your daughter. Help your daughter comb her Barbie hair. Just whatever. Have fun watch cartoons get your kids there enjoy it um so i want to thank johnny i want to talk Tarek, uh maddie bot um swamp rabbit chiron uh autumn who's my helper out there maria who's awesome paulette who's great um black phoenix um 41054 i know i'll screw that up um, Way Out Toys, um, you guys are, are here every week, and I want to thank you all. And I know I skipped some of you, and I'm sorry. But, um, man, I'm glad. Just stay there, hang out, have fun, be a kid for a little bit, and uh, let the real world go away for a little bit. Because there's too much pain and too much bullcrap in the real world. And... Uh, simpler times so on that note i want you guys to check it out hopefully i got a post credit cartoon here so i want you guys to enjoy that and uh, i want you all to take care and i'll see you all there captain out bye this saturday morning marked the first time that no cartoons aired on an american broadcast channel the last channel still showing cartoons hold the plug Cartoons were the dominant morning program from the 1960s through the 1980s.
Identify yourselves to my satisfaction or die. You fool! Don't open that door! Men, you're being shipped back to a uh, rest and recreation area. You've earned it. But, sir, I don't want... Soldier, that was an order. Enjoy it. Just help me angle their raft so the tide will take it in the right direction. It was mighty nice of you to return their explosives, Cap. Look, it's going to hit. Very perceptive, Bucky. Once again, I feel a wave of depression surging over me. All day I've had Bucky on my mind. What did you say, Cap? Huh? Oh, I was thinking of Bucky. Let's go, lad. Allie! A girl's voice. She must be in deadly danger. Stop struggling, lady. We don't like girl reporters. Oh, I'm not a reporter. I'm a special agent. Thanks for telling us. Good evening, Major Corey. Who in blazes are you? I am the Red Skull. And you made a fatal mistake by leaving your window open. It's too late to use that gun, Major. This gas will take away your memory for months. And by then, we will have triumph. Captain America, bah! He will not interfere with my plans. Nothing can stop the Red Skull. Fire a warning shot. Bucky, quick! Over here, bring my uniform. He has recovered. Open fire. The look in your eyes. You too hate all mankind. But an inspiration. That was idiotic. There is no place to run here. I am ready to obey your every command. Ready! Supreme Commander. You will kill the Supreme Commander. You will kill the Supreme Commander. You will kill the Supreme Commander. Grab his legs, Charlie! Now we got you. You got me, all right. Got me in perfect position. For one, two, and three. Isn't this the outfit your ex-partner wore? What? What did you say? Look how Bucky's uniform fits me. Anyone would think I'm your partner. Cap, what's wrong? Why are you looking at me in that way? Take it off. It's not for you to wear. But Cap, I didn't think it would make you so mad. I said take it off. And don't say you're my partner. I lost my partner. Bucky died because of me. That's why I won't have another partner ever. Hi, Steve. Howdy, Bucky. How's our regimental mascot this fine day? Okay, if I get to go on the big drive. Not a chance. You know the rules. No teenage mascot can go into combat. What's this? Boy known as Bucky, prisoner at Greymoor Castle, will be disposed of according to plan. They've got him! Without a moment's hesitation, Private Rogers takes off. Captain America decides to enter in his own way. We must fire the rocket quickly. Correction. I launched my own rocket. He's going to kill it. Cut him down. I have the girl. And now surrender. For a moment, Captain America is stopped. Then, suddenly... I did it! I shall destroy the enemy! And this evil castle! <laughs> Look out, Cap! Behind you! Rick, are you all right? Cap, watch out! Yeah. Can't see what's in that cage, but I'll smash it anyway. Rick, I almost killed him. 
Simo planned it that way. Now nothing will stop me. It's over for you, Captain America. Prepare to die. Now I'll tilt my shield so the sun's rays catch it at the right angle. My eyes! I can't see! Stay back! shield. It saved me. But Zemo had no shield. It had to end this way, Rick. He was too dangerous to live. I can't explain not aging. But if you doubt my word, test me. So be it. <laughs> but who are you? We are known as the Mighty Avengers. In an old building a few blocks away. Where's that guy with the gun? He's gone. I just turned away for a minute. He must have slipped into the shadows while we were watching the boy. I think I'm my old self again. Except I, uh, I seem to be a bit stiff. But not near as stiff as you were when we first found you. <laughs> you are on time? That is good. Do you have my supplies? Sure, Simon. I brought everything you wanted. But I could not remain hidden forever. One day, Captain America found me. Zemo, I know about the infernal adhesive you are creating and how you plan to use it. Don't throw that shield! No! Later, I had my revenge and thought I had destroyed Captain America. Now I must find him and finish the job. You'll never be an Avenger. You lack honor. The last word is a woman's prerogative. Look! That tow truck ahead of us. I'll hold on to the tow chain while you drive. Okay, hang on. It's working. It's just like water skiing on dry land. You let him escape, but we'll recapture him before they find a solution for Adhesive X. A solution for Adhesive X? I never thought of that. With such a solution, I could finally remove this hood from my head. I must have it. I must. I must. It's a transistor-powered spool of lead foil I invented to protect atomic scientists against radiation. It seeks out and completely envelops anything radioactive. Then I attach this inflatable lead-covered balloon, and while you dangle up there, you'll have lots of time to meditate about what it means to defy the forces of law and order. See what a karate do in the hands of a master can do. Cap, look out! That voice, it's Bucky. They're gaining on us. You've got to drive faster. I'm in an impossible fantasy world. It's true, I'm going mad. Wake up, wake up. Ah, oh, you're opening your eyes. Then it was you who caught me. It wasn't them. It is time I completed the mission I was created for. The total and ultimate destruction of Captain America. And at that very moment, in the headquarters of AIM... My blade will slow you down, Quicksilver. His weapon spins like a propeller. My hex power will cause his sword to slip through his fingers. What happened? You have 10 seconds to make me leader of the Avengers. Don't do it. We can't let you die. They won't have to make a decision now. Silver, enough. Leave them for me. Okay, Fu Manchu, let's talk. Did you plant the bomb? Sure. Leave at once. I shall blow up Avengers headquarters myself tonight. But how can I be leader of the Avengers if they're destroyed? Question me not. Do as I say. <laughs> Lucky I threw the mechanism into the air when I heard it throb. I'm warning you, you overrated has been. I've been itching for a chance to change that part of your hair. No, like I don't. Rats. Quicksilver's hurt. We've got to stop that train. It's empty. A runaway. Look out. I can do this with a blaster. Somebody... Knock me out, Cap. From behind. The Avengers are running wild! We had to stop that train, somehow, to save Quicksilver's life. 
and to keep the engine from hitting the broken rails. The Avengers Emergency Fund is emptied by a staggering bill for all the train damages. Why, you... Cap, don't! Stay out of this, Pietro. Yeah, it's my fight. Anytime, loudmouth. You ask for it. Here's where the Avengers get a new leader. Oh, no. No, stop. Cap, Hawkeye. Look, it's a court order. Because of the things that have happened, we've been ordered to disband the Avengers. Hello? Hello? Who's calling? Uh-oh, Enchantress. Are you afraid to speak? Turn off that mumbo-jumbo or I'm hanging up. Lights, those sounds again. No, her sorcery's not going to get me. Captain America can't be beaten so easily. No, no, never. I'll find her, but not on my knees. Strange. Something tells me I should follow that bird. Not on my knees, I won't. I won't. No, I won't. Hawkeye is right. He's getting old. No, I'm not. I'm the leader of the Avengers. Lights, the sound. Stop it, I can't see. I can't think. It just can't be. No, I won't believe it, Pietro. I won't. There were witnesses, sis. One even tried to stop him. I'm sorry I failed, said the costume bystander who identified himself as Power Man. Something wrong here. I sense it within that briefcase. No, be careful. It's coming open. A tape recorder. On that tape, he has everything you said. To prove to the police that the Avengers are innocent. A disguise? It's... Captain America! That tape, Power Man. The police must never hear it. But I'll see that they do. Hawkeye, where are you? can do a lot when it's for a friend. Not with me, you can't. Here's one from me. <clears throat> now, Quicksilver. No, 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 wait. There are more behind me. What the? Look out, the floor. Help! Help! I'm falling! You to face me in battle. One at a time. First, you must set my sister free. No! Not until the battle is ended. Then, let it begin. Not until I change to combat attire. Your allies, nothing but proofbacks against me. These puny weapons, they bore me. The Irish Commissar, triumph of Lord. What does he do with the great? The Avenger moved with the speed of a wind. Let me lay my hands on you. Oh, Mr. Oh, Mr. Oh, Mr. He is pulling the adventure to him. Enough! It is time to end this witless path. Just as I suspected. Stand away! That is my secret! Stop him, you fools! An accursed shield! Bullets have no effect on it! There's an army base not far from here. Equipped with heavy weapons. Missiles. If I can reach it in time. We have found something with a large knob on it. Should we remove it? No! I'll stop resisting and let myself be pulled up by the force of the air vacuum. Now! Now! If I can just grab that wing! The two deadly behemoths are now irrevocably linked together. Only the Red Skull could have conceived such a mind-staggering plan. Its purpose seems to be to wipe out the entire human race. Notice how the first and second sleepers have linked together? There seems to be a space still vacant here at the top. It can only mean the third sleeper is the brain. A gigantic mechanical head, which seems to resemble the Red Skull himself, rises upwards, propelled by powerful high-pressure air fans, there to await the coming of the other two sleepers, and then high in the sky. The final linkage takes place.
Once over the pole, its rays could blast a path down to the very center of the Earth. Then when the sleeper reaches its goal, the unbearable heat at the planet's core would cause the bomb to ignite, setting off an endless chain reaction of atomic explosions that would finally cause the entire surface of the Earth to shatter like an eggshell. But that's only a wild guess. How can you be sure that such a catastrophe was the Red Skull's intention? I can't be sure. But do we dare shut our eyes to the grim possibility? What in blazes are you doing now? No one is powerful enough to fight the international secret force of S.H.I.E.L.D. No one except... Batrock. Captain America and Batrock find the lovely fugitive in time to save her from the terrible doom, which is just seconds away. The triumph is truly yours. With the Inferno 42 still possessed by the others, it is not safe to remain here. I've got to stop them quickly. Look out! It's Captain America! God! It's Captain America! Who are you shooting at? No, it wasn't me. It was one of them. One of who? Those costumed men. Look! They're escaping in that airborne ship. I don't see anything. What is this? Some kind of gag? There it is! Taking off right in front of everyone! Look at them, all acting as though they saw nothing. Am I actually losing my mind? What is that? I got a plan. No matter what's coming. Turn around, there's another one. Now then, the sooner we get to the root of this, what on earth? I saw him. I heard him. I touched him. He was real. You are sicker than I suspected. Look what you've done. It wasn't me, Doc. It was just an hallucination. Remember? You're in a bad way. You need help. You said the Red Skull. Then he's alive. He's responsible for this helmet. He knew its hypnotic effect came from built-in subsonic frequency waves. But I outguessed him by placing a printed circuit beneath the A of my head mask. A circuit capable of jamming any hypnotic waves in the area. Is this Cap's fate? To plummet to his death on the aisle below? A final triumph for the evil Red Skull? It can't be! It's Captain America! Oh, the pain. I can't hang on. The magnets in my gloves, they're clinging to the metal seat. Bring me the cosmic tube. I so command. At last, it's mine. The ultimate power. Power which can convert thought waves into material action. There is nothing I cannot do. Nothing. Nothing. You have served your purpose. Therefore, be gone. Wait, Skull. Wait. Let me serve you. At that very split second, with a single thought, the Skull halts the atom transfer. Of course. You shall be my personal slave. And I, who am now your master, shall be fitted in a kingly suit of golden armor. Let me kneel before you. It is only fitting. Yes, fitting indeed for your abject fawning submission. So long as your fingers are not fully closed, the cube's power is lessened. I can free myself. The cube still possesses that power. Let us be split asunder. I command it. In an hour never chance, freedom's boldest gladiator smashes the cosmic cube from the archfiend's hand. With his warped mind forgetting all else, the skull dives after the cube.